Welcome everyone to our city council meeting for Monday, March 12th. If we could have a roll call, Madam Clerk, to establish quorum. Terry McClung. I'm here. Christy Kendrick. Here. Melissa Green. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Mickey Schneider. Here. David Mitchell. Here. We have six. All right. If we can do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, if I can get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I'd like to add an item under new business, the parks and the Eureka Springs Community Center relationship. I'll second that. Anything else? We do have two items uh, to be deferred. Item number two, um, which is the ordinance to add the Planning, Commission, Planning Commission's recommendation to the code uh, regarding the b, b The Planning Commission needs to hold a public hearing, so that's going to go back to the Planning Commission for a public hearing. Uh, so that will be deferred from us. And also item number three, which is the ordinance for paying down the bond payments. Uh, we had the ordinance drafted, but there's still some uh, slight modifications, so that's going to be deferred to our next meeting. If there's nothing else. All those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mr. McClung, second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes that submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. 5 1. Uh, that brings us up next to our uh, commission committee reports, uh, commission committee authority reports. The um, Planning Commission, we have a vacancy, position four, and we got a vote on an application for Beverly Abbey. I'll yes, make a motion for position four to vote to accept the nom nomination of Beverly Abbey. Second. Any discussion? I spoke to her today. I think she'll be good. Good. All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of Beverly Abbey for position four on the Planning Commission, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Uh, hospital, we have a position vacant on it, which would expire in uh, 9 of 2000. And also we have a position vacant for the cemetery, which, uh, so anybody out there interested in serving on the hospital or the cemetery, please contact uh, the city and we'll get an application in. Uh, next is parks. we got uh, Justin's here. He's going to make a little pre comments on parks. Thank you. Uh, I prepared something in writing, as the mayor can attest. If I go extemporaneous with notes, we could be here a while. <laughs> uh, I want to start by thanking you for the opportunity to come and speak tonight. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit on our downhill trails project, as that's our topic of the day, so to speak. Um, we're happy to have an opportunity to get good information on the official record. Are we all right? Uh, and are optimistic that we will continue to improve communication between the Parks Commission, City Council, and local citizens. I am happy to attend similarly in the future to update and inform the Council on a monthly or on an as-needed basis to improve the line of communication with this body. I also continue to be available for discussions at any time, uh, even on vacation, as I believe Alderman Thomas or the Mayor can attest. The Parks and Recreation Commission realizes that the recent project developments have progressed at an unparalleled pace and that we have not been as effective as we believed we were being in regards to communications. This has been a result of pace and evolving project, not any intentional withholding of information. Our website has rec been recently redesigned and rebuilt. Uh, this process caused us some challenges during the latter part of the year with existing functionality. 
but we are excited about our new website and its integrated communications with other social media platforms to better disseminate information. We recognize the need to improve in this area and are already in motion with new tools and techniques. Excuse me. With the challenges in communication, in inaccurate information has made its way around. I would like to take a few minutes to provide a gen general timeline about the project and address some of the main points that seem to have the most discussion and increase. <clears throat> I was first contacted about the potential for this project in a brief phone call Friday, September 29th from Mr. Brandon Pack over there. Um, this is while I was attending the National Recreation and Park Association conference and by Monday, October the 2nd, through another phone call, uh, it was communicated to me that there is serious interest in building downhill trails at Lake Leatherwood with rock solid trails and that they wanted to start almost immediately. Conversations continued and the project began to look viable, but not without many challenges. The first challenge, a primary component, was that for this project to function and be secure, the property at the top of the current trailhead would need to be purchased. Without this property, the project could potentially be a bridge to nowhere. At the October 16th Parks Commission meeting, I was authorized to negotiate trail projects at Leatherwood and in town with a $50,000 match authorized for both. This allowed us to negotiate effectively with something concrete to offer in the process. We also reached out to the Arkansas Natural Heritage Commission at this time to coordinate an ecological assessment of the area. Even though at this point we were not confident the deal would materialize, this was a task we had already approved to begin a full inventory of our resource. With this in mind, we decided it would be appropriate for this project and would be a good spend even if this project was not ultimately approved. We continue this relationship and expect several visits this year and in the future as we work towards a full resource inventory. <coughs> Also during this time, with new mapping and examining updated property lines, it was determined that the existing Miner's Rock Trail crossed three separate parcels of private land outside of park boundaries. With this now known, we are effectively encouraging trespassing onto private property. Uh, neighbors in this area have changed and operations based on handshake deals from the past with different owners or the fact that no one had complained yet did not offer us a situation we were comfortable with. This new dynamic made this potential downhill project even more appealing to us as a means to save a large section of Miner's Rock Trail. If we had to rewrite Miner's Rock to inside existing park boundaries, we estimate we would have lost up to a mile of existing trail with no replacement uh, to accommodate the property lines and suitable geography. <coughs> Initial trail designs did not include preserving the existing Miner's Rock Trail due to the multiple intersections with the new downhill lines. As the designers became more familiar with our park and the nature of that iconic trail, we worked to find a compromise that would preserve and integrate as much of the trail into the new lines as possible. Ultimately, we have a solution that preserves and separates Miner's Rock Trail away from the downhill lines or creates structures to elevate intersections apart. A section of .94 miles of Miner's Rock will become a maintenance and emergency access road that will access all downhill lines and be replaced with a .72 mile reroute. The current 3.42 Mile Miner's Rock Trail will now be 3.2 miles long and now offer a loop option from the current Miner's parking area back to the same area that is 2.83 miles including new multi-use trail that is already constructed. We believe that we have arrived at the best compromise between preserving as much of this iconic trail as possible, addressing safety concerns and needs and improving the sustainability of the overall system. The quality of the working connections is truly world class. During this time, October, November, I made several trips to Bentonville and spent a good deal of time on the phone to work out areas of concern. The entire time noting that without purchase of the property and at a minimum of permanent recreational easement, the, pro the project could not go forward. We progressed negotiations in a normal ebb and flow manner for several weeks in October and the beginning of November and ultimately reached a point that both parties seemingly felt comfortable. The process would require some faith on both sides to meet our timeline to keep these world-class builders at work in our region and provide a feature unparalleled for 900 miles in any direction. The last two pieces of, for the agreement relied on the property going under contract and our commission approving the cooperative agreement. The first and a second piece of property was under contract on the morning of November 21st, the day of our commission meeting. If our commission did not approve the project that day, the project would not have happened and I would have nothing more than a story similar to the big one that got away. I honestly did not know until that day if this was going to happen. Uh, we were able to agree on language that acknowledged the need for more planning while we began work on areas we felt confident about. The key component 
uh, of the agreement was establishing our approval for all work and also includes rest included requests for low impact development and stormwater considerations in all phases of the project, even those out of our current property lines. With this flexible agreement, both parties felt confident due to the skill and experience of all parties involved. These benefactors are willing to partner with us based on two main things. First, improvements made at Lake Leatherwood over the past couple of years provided a real example of how we are making meaningful, meaningful improvements and embracing the growth of trails in the area. The second thing that made these negotiations possible was the long-term financial security we can now demonstrate with increases in revenue, but more importantly, the renewal of the Leatherwood tax and the security that provides our system, making us reliable partners. Without this tax issue, I do not believe that we could have been successful in our negotiations. And the citizens who approve this measure with the two-thirds majority should know that this tax is equaling several million dollars of investment we would not have seen without this support. <coughs> The initial agreement was for $500,000 in construction funding with Eureka Springs Parks and Recreation Commission agreeing to $50,000 for work on Miner's Rock and accompanying needs. A uh, key component that we addressed from the beginning was the ecological impact, especially in existing glade areas and potential glade restoration areas. The location of these glades is established and mapped, which allowed us good data to evaluate the area. Trail routes have avoided these areas and care is being taken during construction to balance safety, sustainability, and the ecology. <coughs> Trail crews are headed by Aaron Rogers, who holds a degree in botany. Mr. Rogers familiarized himself with local plants of concern early in the process and we are pleased with the care taken during construction. Few trees or rocks along the trail side have so much as a rub on them. In areas that rock is being stacked, mossy sides are turned out to reestablish along new walls and features. Additionally, at the January 30th Park Commission meeting, we heard a presentation from Casey Brewster, a doctoral student at UA, about a cooperative grant proposal to restore roughly 200 acres of glade areas through cedar removal and prescribed burns. The project is intended to restore one of the largest glade concentrations in our region, and the benefits of primary concern are habitat and colony improvement for the collared lizard, and the potential for access to the areas by the public for interpretive and educational programming. Parks and Recreation Commission will per potentially be partnering with the Nature Conservancy, Arkansas Forestry Commission, Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, the University of Arkansas, and University of Arkansas Extension, and possibly other groups to perform, perform the work needed for this project. This potential pr project is exciting and needed on its own merits, but when set alongside the downhill project, provides an almost acre for acre balance for development and conservation projects within the park boundaries. <coughs> As the project progressed and evolved, we found ourselves needing to balance the miners' crossing and the need for additional improvements at the hubs of the downhill trails. We considered holding off on a couple lines to move cost to the crossings, but then a second proposal was prepared by Rock Solid to include bridges for Miners Rock and the construction of two hubs. Two options were offered, one for smaller features that were more cost effective, and one that is exactly what we would build if price was no consideration. The smaller ask was for $299,790, the larger ask was for $436,150. The larger ask was approved with no additional financial requirements from Eureka Springs Parks and Recreation Commission, bringing the approved construction budget up to $936,150. Over $600,000 worth of property has also been purchased in relation to this project, again without cost to Eureka Springs Parks and Recreation Commission and with the, with the intention to donate 35 acres of that property to the city of Eureka Springs. We continue to fine tune our plan and are currently working on a punch list that will have us operational and safe until the project is completed this fall. We are currently looking at a change of design to keep all trail users off of the road completely and eliminate another existing safety concern. This would utilize the tunnel under the park road and add a shuttle pickup location that is dedicated to that use and encourages trail users to not cross the road. We will be adding temporary signage to the courses and are focused on the facilities needed as we go online in May, even if it is in beta form. We expect to see five new lines in the multi-use trail completed before May. Uh, we've also learned that there will be a crew in the area over the summer as well to keep working on some of these areas. Our commission believes that we have reacted to an opportunity that has tremendous benefits for our entire town and population. We're excited about this partnership and development. We firmly believe that this partnership will continue to grow and offer benefits to our community. We're proud of the work we are doing and are similarly confident that approval of this project was a correct decision when all management considerations are included. 
that is what I had to say about that. So, uh, Thank you, Justin. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the transparency. Thank you for standing up there representing parks very much. Speaking for myself, not all the other council here, my concerns have not been <coughs> with the trails, the concept of trails, the level of the complexity of that trail being an advanced one because I think it adds to the parks trails that are there and, and the ability of different people at different levels to bike and walk, etc. I had issues with other technical things that I thought were potential overreach or miscommunication. And I think there was an opportunity as this progressed to have a little more transparency uh, with the public and with council. And I think that's what created a lot of the problem here was the lack of it. And I think by having you as a spokesman and coming and everything, hopefully on a quarterly basis based on what's in your statute that we're supposed to get in the first place. Or more, uh, or more frequently, you're personally welcome, more frequently, any time. I think that would open the transparency and everything up. And likewise, I, I think this, myself included, should we should all consider the benefactor who has made this possible. And you never mentioned that person's name. I, I don't know if you're <laughs> if you're worried it's going <laughs> to. No, no, I, I'm just I it, trying to deal with the issues ahead. at hand. It, it, the person is. This is funded by the Walton Foundation with the NWA Trailblazers. Well, with actually Tom Walton, Tom Walton himself, not correct. actually the foundation, right. correct? So it's actually Tom Walton as an individual. Maybe it'll be the foundation later, but right now it is that gentleman. True. Yeah, okay. I don't know the mechanics. And there's of nothing wrong with that and I think we should acknowledge the benefactor and the support and we should be appreciative of that and therefore I'm going to make a motion at this time that the City Council allow the mayor to adapt a resolution that comes from the city of Eureka Springs acknowledging the benefactor that has made this possible. That would be very very nice and appreciated. I second that. There we go. Motion and second. Mr. McClellan? Um, do, we, uh, do we not want to take that a step further and make it an endorsement to parks for the project itself? Wouldn't that be separate? I think the, the resolution could include that endorsement. That's, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it needs to. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. I, I really appreciate your coming to campus and talking to us because this is the first. And from what you just told me, I've heard a chronology of your contacts, but I, am, I have no idea what this project is. Um, I don't know where the trails are going. I mean, it would be nice to see drawings. There is so much that I don't know about this project. Um, I don't know what our obligations are, how this affects, how does this fit in with our master, our Leatherwood Master Trail Thank you. plan? Our, our Leatherwood, our, ma our <laughs> Leatherwood City <laughs> Park Master Thank you, Plan. Justin. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm just confused and I am at this point not prepared to endorse any such plan because I, this is the first I have gotten any official word of it. I've heard all sorts of rumors, but I don't know anything about this project. Mr. Mitchell. My motion was to acknowledge by resolution the benefactor and the support of Tom Walton to this project, which is about $1.5 million. This point. Now, yes, the Parks Commission and the downhill, I, I understand that piece, but I, again, my resolution was to, to, to acknowledge and honor that person for stepping up, which has made all of this possible, because there was an old theory was I've been through business in most of my life, and that was uh, no money, no mission. So you can have all the great ideas in the world you want. If you don't have any money, they're not going to happen. And this gentleman stepped up to the plate and is allowing this city 
to ex expand and grow and do something that is positive. And, and that, that person, that foundation, and all the people involved should receive accolades from this council. Yes, I, I did not by any means mean to uh, disagree with the original motion. I was talking about the proposed okay. amendment or okay. expansion of the motion. Mr. McFarland? I don't know how you can have one without the other. Uh, because, I mean, you're going to, you, what are you thanking for? For giving all this that we may not, you know, that we want or don't want? Or I don't know what you mean. I think we need to, you know, it's, it's, it, we need to endorse the project as a whole now. Now, I understand that her needs, that she needs to get familiar with it. And, and so this is not something that's going to happen tonight. You know, there's, there's, it wouldn't be read offered up for, you know, until the next meeting at least anyway. But uh, to, to come up with and expand on, a, on an industry that is, it ties in with the tourism, and, and it's green, and it's low impact. There is no such thing as no impact growth, you know, and this is the low impact growth that we want. It's, it's that, I mean, it just makes good sense. It's a great fit for us. And 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 I think we need to get behind it 100%. All right, hey, people, please, Mr. Mitchell. The the resolution is not in any way encroaching upon the commission to respond to 14.263-203, which says they have the full and complete authority to build, manage, operate, maintain, and keep in good state of repair any municipal buildings deemed necessary to carry on the recreational park, including everything. They have full and complete charge of the buildings, the grounds, the right to control, permit, refuse to permit. They have the right to employ or remove managers. So I'm not too sure at this point, if they have a benefactor, they have the money, that they don't need anything more from council. It's 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 theirs. I I totally yes, ma'am. I totally disagree. Um, I think that council has a lot to say about this matter, and I will address that when we if the um, the agenda item comes up. I think this is perhaps right. premature at this point. All right, we got the motion on the table for uh, for an endorsement uh, and resolution for the endorsement of this project that no. I can bring to the table. No, just to acknowledge the benefactor. A resolution. A resolution to acknowledge the benefactor. To, <coughs> to allow you to acknowledge the resolution. Just, just a minute. Please, David, go ahead. It was, it, my motion was to uh, acknowledge the benefactor and really allow you to draw the resolution for it. I, I didn't expand it to include what Mr. With, uh, what, uh, what Mr. McClung said. Uh, that wasn't part of my motion at this time. Because I, I'm going to go back. I didn't think we needed to because they have the authority. All right. I still, I still don't understand exactly what, what it's to accomplish, the, the what, what the resolution is is to accomplish. I, I, I don't get it. <coughs> Sorry. I, 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 I uh, my motion was exactly what I stated was to acknowledge a citizen and a benefactor stepping up and providing the funds. To, to do the resources to make this viable and to make this happen. And it was to acknowledge that benefactor in a positive manner that supported that person in donating this money, which will then lead to all of it will come from these trails, the benefit from them, what the community gets to use, what the benefit will be to the city long term. I think it's a win-win situation, and the person that's put up that kind of amount of money deserves to be acknowledged. Is that not also an endorsement of the project? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just... <laughs> My second didn't uh, include that. Uh, Mickey. To me, the resolution is merely thanking someone for donating land expenses, whatever, however you want to look at it, to the city of Eureka to use as we will. It has nothing to do with endorsing a project or anything else. It's acknowledging the goodwill of a person 
And who knows, this might get other people to donate things or to help out in whatever way, even if it's volunteering to work on a trail. Point being, someone has gone out of their way to help us. The least we can do is say thank you. Mr. McClellan? That's all well and good, but, you know, in order for him to donate it to us, we got to accept it, and that's us that accepts the gift. Yeah, but not what we do with it. Yes, yes ma'am. I mean, it's, 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 I'm sure that everything that he's offering us is with a caveat, that it be used for the purpose that it's intended. And so, so I think endorsing, I'd like to make an amendment to David's motion and, and include that we endorse the project of the downhill project at, at Leatherwood. All right, please, hold on. Do I have a second on the amendment? Can we ask Justin? No, do I have a second on the amendment? I need the second. Can we ask Justin first? If there's a caveat, what? For a second? For a second? I mean, there's, we, no, we don't, we don't need, we just, we just either, we're either going to go. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Thank you. I got uh, encouraged. All right. Okay, Mickey. Is there a tie-in? Did he say you don't get it if you don't do? The, the, the donation is on it being used for trails and access to public. Uh, okay, uh, trails in use. general, or These that one. That that that's what dollars, we yes. needed to know. Okay. The, Mr. So Mr. that's what Terry was saying, right? Well, I still am having a little problem here. Why we have to in, endorse it when they have the power they, <laughs> to, but, to do it? But yeah, yeah. I know where you're at. And they also have, they've already instituted an agreement, which obviously the mayor will eventually need to sign uh, here at some point because it says between Eureka Springs and the Trailblazers, and, and since it says Eureka Springs, you, you would think the mayor would sign it, but that's an easy fix. There's no problem really with that long term, but it does need to be contractually fixed. But I, if it... it I guess I need to hear from the attorney right about now uh, because I was trying to acknowledge a benefactor to be sure that that person was acknowledged and if, there, if at the point when the point comes along that they're going to give us the land, yes the city has to uh, probably agree to accept the land. Uh, but no doubt about it, but I, I don't. I'm not. I'm having a hard time seeing why that has to be in the resolution to acknowledge the benefactor. I, I just. I almost think you could make that separate. I, I'm just. I'm not problem. sure what you. Do you understand the question? I'm not sure that there's an answer the way he wants it addressed, but I will attempt to give you a reason behind it. Okay. If you uh, recognize him and then the city does not follow through with the project, you've recognized him for something that basically is a fallacy, something that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it, you either probably want to recognize him for the whole project and recognize the project, or you may want to wait to recognize him until the project is actually accomplished. Well, otherwise, you may be giving him a piece of paper to hang on his wall that says, "We appreciate you, <laughs> but we turn you down." Hmm. Wait, she was. Ms. Kendrick. I would like to make a motion to defer the, this conversation until um, the end, until we discuss. Uh, <coughs> Item new business item number six. Isn't, uh, isn't there a motion on the floor already? Yeah, but if she wants a motion. Motion, a motion to defer, to defer will take precedence over that so if she gets a second. You want to defer this to the end of the meeting? Why? Yes. I think Why? It would be more appropriate. Okay, that. so there's a motion to defer. Is there a second? Okay, hearing none, that motion fails. So we're back to the amendment. Okay. To, to okay. I will 
withdraw my motion a second and I will make a new one. Whoops, we got the amendment first. Oh, her amendment first. No, Mr. McClone's amendment. Correct. That you seconded. Did. <coughs> yeah, I didn't second it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I did? Yes. Yeah, you did. Okay. Well, so we need to take the second off or we just add the amendment and that will make it a right? I think it would be fine if we add the amendment. I really do. If we add the amendment, I think the amendment is to endorse the project. Yes. The okay. city council, we, we okay. move forward. And I think that if all right. we all, in, if there's no more further discussion, I'll call for that motion. I just would like to say one thing. Yes, sir. My only concern about adding the amendment, I would love to hear from these people for and against it because they came here tonight and we're voting and just negating their being here. I I think from the, the the applause that I heard, most of them support the amendment. I would like to hear them. Uh, well, we've got they the motion. came out. I, to I, speak. I understand, but there's a motion on the table right and now. And that was so. my discussion of the motion. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, Christy made made the motion to defer it. We, we oh, and that got defeated. Yeah, okay. So we're discussing. Any further discussion on the amendment? I'll call the question so we can it No, well, we don't need to call oh, the question. Okay. If there's no further discussion on the amendment, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. Yes, no. Okay. We have two no's, so it's 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. All right. Now then, we got back to the main motion, which is a motion for the recognition uh, of the donor. <coughs> Uh, and project. And well, that and was the amendment. That was the amendment. I yeah. thought we just. What did we just vote? That was the amendment. We you voted on the amendment to for the endorsement. Add the endorsement. That's correct. Uh, he just said that the two main motion includes the endorsement. Now the main motion is for. May, uh, I, may I clarify? Yes. The amendment was for the endorsement of the project. Okay. The original <coughs> motion was to acknowledge the benefactor. Okay. All right. All those in favor, sing five or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I am. Five one. Five one. All right. Okay. So we will get a motion. We will do a, a resolution to bring to the council table next week in that regards. All right. Okay, please. All right. If, if you wouldn't mind, now we go into public comments. We may have done this backwards, but uh, please, we have a lot of people here. Please limit your time to three minutes, if you would, please. And uh, I would say please try not to duplicate, but you got three minutes. It's your comments. Good evening. My name is Judy Montgomery. I have lived in Eureka Springs in the 72632 zip code since 1985 all but nine minute, uh, months of it in the city limits. And my first comment is to say thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to record these meetings. Back about 25 years ago, a handful of us representing a larger citizens action group raised the $500 at that time that we needed to pay the cable provider who was TCA Cable the $500 that they required to start that process. And it's been going continuously pretty much since then and I would like to see it continue. Um, so thank you. Thank you. My second comment is that I am not certain what your agenda items will accomplish tonight, but Mr. Mitchell uh, gave me the words I wanted to say, which is that we have a parks commission. We have a parks department. Now, he didn't say this, but Justin Huss is the best thing that ever happened to this town. <laughs> and I would encourage you, I would encourage you to please leave the park's operation as it is with a commission, with a department headed by Justin Huss. Thank you.
I'm Dorothy Gertin and I've lived here since 2001. I've been working with the Trails Committee for a long time since we got the master plan through and I have to second that Justin Huss is the greatest thing that's happened to this town and I have to applaud what he's done out at Lake Leatherwood because I spent a lot of time out there. I've camped out there, I've ridden out there, I've hiked out there, I've floated out there and we have an amazing resource and I hope that the Parks Commission continues as it is and continues to take care of that what is one of our greatest natural resources. Thank you. So I'm taking a little bit of a different tact. I'm Jacqueline Wolven and I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. I've been thinking a lot about the concept of happiness uh, and its objective as in our community. Did you realize that it's the only right mentioned twice in the Declaration of Independence? Happiness. So what makes a city happy? I've looked at Seattle, Victoria, Canada, and the country of Bhutan. They believe it's psychological well-being, physical health, work-life balance, social vitality and connection, education, arts and culture, environment and nature, good government, and material well-being. Some scholars see the study of happiness as a branch of economics. I see it as crucial to economic development. In my work, I have the opportunity to visit communities to consult and speak. I was in Oregon City two months ago. I'm going to Kansas City this month. I'll be in New Mexico in July. I'm often talking about happiness factors of their community. You can feel a city's vibe, and that permeates all areas, the businesses, the people, and the government. An unhappy city isn't very prosperous, and it isn't progressive. So is happiness a role in government? You bet. The International Consortium of Local Governments for Sustainability say municipal leaders, that's you guys, play a direct role in human happiness because you deliver the services, water, electricity, transportation, and the public services. And you set the framework conditions, taxes, building codes, policies, and plans of a person's everyday life. So what does that look like for you? Supporting public-private partnerships. Supporting the work of commissions, departments, and nonprofits. Amplifying the good of what's happening in our community. Specifically, support the gift of Tom and Stuart Walton. Thank you. Support parks and trails as an economic development tool, just as Fayetteville, Rogers, Springdale, Bentonville, Siloam Springs, Helena, West Memphis. The list is on and on. Be advocates for the commissions and the community and understand the leadership role you've been given. You all moved here, except you. <laughs> you all moved here because you loved it. You all live here because you love it. I want you to f remember that while you're governing. Hello, my name is Herman Owens, and my daughter wrote there, Kaylin. Uh, we moved here uh, two years ago because of the quality single track that surrounds this town. We moved here mostly for mountain biking. I am here today to express my full support for the downhill trails at Lake Leatherwood. The non for profit Outdoor Industry Association describes bicycling as a gateway activity. Kids that ride bikes are more apt to try other sports and develop stronger connection to the outdoor world. 
At Bike Park, it's a place that entire families can spend their time building skills and exercising together. Uh, beyond the positive outlet that bike parks offer to kids, uh, some skills promoted at the bike parks are self, reliance, balance, endurance, and spatial awareness. These skills can inspire the confidence that people of all ages need to ride to work, school, to local market, and, or to explore their nearby trails by bicycle. These are all healthy choices. Bike parks also benefit host communities economically. Quality recreational based facilities can improve home values, enhance tourism, and support local businesses. Competitions, festivals, and other special events offer many opportunities for programming, things like youth rider groups, professional coaching, and skills instruction. Most important thing, uh, bike park enhances the quality of life and boosters uh, community pride. My experience has shown that it it is not unusual for people who initially speak out against the bike park in the community to reverse their opinion 180 degrees and become an outspoken proponent <coughs> once they see successful execution of the project. Thank you. Anthony McBride. Hello, good afternoon everybody. I'm Anthony. I'm a local business owner. I own Abundant Transportation here in Eureka Springs and I'm here to oppose um, under new businesses, number one, application for ambassador transportation to operate a tax service here in Eureka Springs. Um, there, I really don't believe there is an, enough room for a third taxi service here in the city of Eureka. Um, we operate 24/7 here in the city, and and there's just not enough room, you know, for another taxi service. And I don't think the revenue is there to support three taxi services here in the city, so um, that's a lot to say. Thanks. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. And I'm happy to see all your faces again. <laughs> Now, I've just learned something today from Justin that came as a real surprise, that all the publicity we saw and all that was said that this was funded by the Walton Family Foundation is not true. Now, is that important or not? I think it's important. So, what do I want with regard to the Gravity Park? A complex of trails for one specific user group downhill mountain bikers that is now under construction. What do I want? I want an immediate moratorium on construction. A moratorium that remains in effect while the basic groundwork for the project is completed. Groundwork that has not been done to this day. And then lifting the moratorium uh, when, the, when those completed tasks have been fully considered. Now, what is the basic groundwork? It's inventory. It's just simply looking at that 200-acre parcel, seeing what plants, what species of plants and animals are there that are listed on any of the endangered, uh, rare, to-be-watched lists. It is... The identifying critical habitat. The only habitat that has been identified so far are glades. <coughs> Geological features need to be inventoried. That particular 200 acres is very rich in geological features. And these are rare or unusual stone formations such as miner's rock, estimated to be 380 million years old. Now, uh, the person who told me this also has identified yet another rock out there in that same general area that he estimates to be of the same age. And this man is a well-respected and locally well-known geologist. The other things are archaeological features. Bluffs and cave shelters, mining sinkholes, shafts, 
and relics of Native American artifacts. Now, none of those things have been done. It wouldn't take a lot to do those. All you have to do is declare a moratorium. The money is there to do it with. In fact, it would, as Justin explained at the last parks meeting, come in as in-kind from, from Eureka Springs. It would be part of Eureka Springs <coughs> com component of the money. So I think, I think you are about to grind under one of Eureka's oldest and most well-regarded assets. And for that, I'm sorry for you, and I'm sorry for the park. Hey, Commission. Um, I'm Adam Biasat. I was born and raised in Eureka. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say other than please keep supporting the Parks Commission and uh, parks in general. Um, this downhill project is going to be the start of a big boom for Eureka, uh, an economic boom that we really need. Um, people complain about infrastructure all over the place, but I, I feel like bringing more economic dollars to the city will help fix those things. Um, the last two years have shown large leaps and bounds in the park. A lot of that is maybe not seen to the naked eye because they're problems that have been fixed uh, on top of the, the big projects that, that Justin has accomplished. Um, please continue to support trails in general. Um, it's it's going to pay off. It's, it's This is just a start. It's going to pay off big. Um, I, I feel like the um, ecological concerns have been addressed. Um, if you have confusion about that, Justin can address it. Um, things like Miner's Rock, that's not being touched. You'll still be able to ride or hike or walk right past it just in the exact same fashion as you, you can right now. Um, so just, just keep supporting. Thanks. going to officially decline to <coughs> deliver the comments that I was prepared to tonight based on the fact that I'm a little stunned that this body uh, created a resolution to acknowledge the benefactor of a project and to endorse a project that I don't believe you're fully aware of all of the details, all of the components of, and all the impact that, that project brings both good and bad. I'm, I'm just really stunned that it took you about 15 minutes to gravitate to accepting a plan of this complexity without any questions as to the scope of how far that plan goes beyond just the gravity trail, goes towards the Passion Play, goes towards the Kings River Preserve, goes towards the Buffalo River. Where does it end? Does this body know? I don't think you have enough information to move beyond a general thanks towards an individual who's put up the money for this. Eric. Mm. <laughs> Um, Eric C., local citizen, local trail supporter, trails advocate, um, local business owner. I really don't have much else to say other than the other supporters, other than I think Justin is doing a fantastic job and we need to really support our, our Parks Commission. And um, I see nothing but positives for Yucca Springs um, through continued support of trails and new trails projects. Um, I think it's, uh, I really believe strongly that it's going to be the, the biggest economic engine and um, positive growth proponent that Eureka Springs has ever seen. And I believe that it will give um, the younger, 
younger generations and younger business owners in Eureka Springs a strong future and a healthy future. Thanks. Tracy Johnson, not here. Chad Lee. Uh, Chad Ness. Hi, my name is Chad Manis. <clears throat> Been living here about four years. Uh, I have a uh, fourth grade daughter, seventh grade son, and one's off in college. And number one, I, I, I know Mr. Huss is getting a lot of acclimates, but I'm going to give shout some out to Bill Featherstone too. Um, he's I actually met with him not too long ago at Brews and talking about the trails thing because I thought he was making money doing the trails thing. <laughs> Not happening. And I was disheartened because I wanted to get on that, that, that par or that trail, so to speak. But um, Leatherwood is it's an, it's one of the most... Uh, the, the, the park itself is becoming uh, recognized, not just our local community, but elsewhere. I love the fact that you cannot get cell service out there so my kids can actually play together. So that's, I, I love that. Um, I work in the heart of downtown. And I see cars. I ride my bike all the time. I'm the guy on the black bike with the bright yellow sweatshirt that you guys probably pass. And, um, and weather depending. And I see, in the heart of downtown, I see traffic all the time. And we have more increased traffic here with bikes on the back of their cars. And they are looking for a place to ride. And I honestly believe what, or what is being allowed to do is it's going to open up a, a different demographic that Eureka Springs has um, been longing for. It will increase the economics of Eureka Springs where other projects can get done. Um, that that is pretty much all I have to say. I just wanted to thank the council. Um, I don't get into the politics. I'm usually the one of those are okay, yeah, I'll say my opinion, but I'm, I'm kind of one that goes with the wind. But when I found out about this, this this is the first time I've ever spoke publicly like this in front of any councils or citizens or anything like that. But this project is um, so well needed for this uh, for this community. That's what I got. Good evening, my name is Brandon Pack. I'm the executive director of the Ozark Off-Road Cyclist. As a nonprofit, we have deep roots in Eureka Springs. As volunteers, many of them in this room, the ORC built a large part of the Lake Leatherwood Trail System and were recognized for those efforts at the official opening in 1999. To this day, a branch of our organization, the CC Riders, still voluntarily build and maintain the trails at Lake Leatherwood, Black Bass, and the in-town trails. We also established one of the longest running and largest annual trail-specific events with the annual Fat Tire Festival, an event that will celebrate 20 years this July right here in Eureka Springs and brings hundreds of people to the area. In fact, recent studies show that trail-specific events like the Fat Tire Festival generate over $120 a day per person in tourism dollar to your community. On average, a mountain biker will spend close to $400 that weekend in Eureka Springs. The most popular accommodations are campgrounds and hotels, and we like to eat with burgers, pizza, and beer on that short list. Additional trails will put heads and beds in Eureka Springs, and will put people in your restaurants. Ecotourism, where people travel to the outdoors, is the fastest growing segment in the travel industry. The fastest growing segment in cycling is mountain biking. People will travel to ride world-class trails like the ones currently being constructed at Lake Leatherwood, and they are going to bring their friends, and they will generate new revenue for this community because of trails. Recent studies in Bentonville, and this is specific to Bentonville, but it spreads out, show that over 50% of the trail users were from outside the region or state. Over 50% of the people riding the trails in Bentonville, Arkansas, are from out of the region or state. And in total, over 70% are from outside that city. Trails offering rider progression 
and catering to all skill levels, like the ones being built at Lake Leatherwood, are critical to maintaining a tourism destination for the next generation, something this town has a long history of. We support the Parks Commission. They and the Parks staff are working diligently to ensure that Eureka Springs remains a tourism destination for years to come, and something as simple as trails are going to help make that happen. Thank you. Hello, uh, I am John May Hamilton. I've lived here since I was born. Um, I am an active volunteer and writer here uh, in Eureka. Um, I work with uh, Rock Solid occasionally and uh, I'm hoping to work with them for the next five days during my spring break. Uh, they have helped me learn trail. Uh, I've volunteered with uh, CC riders and ORC in different areas to kind of uh, learn what I really am passionate about uh, riding bikes. Um, I'm super supportive on the decision for the downhill, uh, several of them, I think six uh, in all, and I love the idea of all the tourism and the people here who want to ride bikes. Uh, I am only 17. I can't go out to multiple areas to uh, ride bikes because either I'm too busy, I have homework, and it's great that I can just uh, get in my car and drive down to Leatherwood and hang out for a few hours and ride my bike uh, peacefully. Um, I've also ridden with NICA, that's the Nish National Interscholastic Cycling Association. Um, they started a league two years ago. Uh, the state championship uh, was held last or this year in uh, Eureka Springs and that was awesome because we have world-class trails and everyone loves riding our trails and uh, that means there were kids from the ages of sixth grade to seniors who were uh, mountain biking everyone having a good time camping uh, eating s'mores at the campfire and uh, having a great day and uh, a great weekend at that um, it was, I think, most of the trails uh, that they rode, they rode Miner's Rock. And that is uh, about a five-mile-ish trail, and they did a few laps of it, and uh, they raced, and it was awesome. I, uh, I helped coach uh, my uh, NICA team because I was too busy to actually race that day. So I helped them, and we rode around, and I just enjoy mountain biking in general. And... Uh, I've helped out Rock Solid, and I've been volunteering to learn stuff, and uh, I actually got to meet Tom Walton uh, sun Saturday uh, when I was learning to chink, which is a, a form of uh, trail work where you take rocks and you stack them and you fill in the gaps with other smaller rocks. It's actually really interesting to learn. Um, but I got to meet him. I saw Eric. I saw... Uh, oh, who else? I also met the uh, owner of Rock Solid... Um, Aaron, he was a super cool guy, uh, and I just, uh, <laughs> just trying to express the, the point of view of someone who's younger and enjoys trails. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Denton West. I'm a local <coughs> business owner. I have the bicycle shop downtown, the uh, adventure store. Uh, I'm totally supportive of what's going on with the trails, with the Parks Commission, with the new downhill trails. Um, I guided rides Sunday, they, yesterday, for families from Colorado, uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, Springfield, talked to a family of four, uh, two parents and uh, two teenagers with a four bike rack with four bikes on the back of their station wagon. They were down there just asking questions about this new trail. They're excited about it. It's an exciting thing. These are world class trails that they're building down there. This is going to be the coolest thing between both coasts not counting Colorado. There, there were riders there were riders in the park this weekend from Colorado. It's, it, there hasn't been an opening, there hasn't been an announcement yet, but word of mouth is bringing these riders to our town with their children, with their spouses, and they're spending money. 
they're going to lunch, then they're coming back and riding, then they're going to dinner. It's it's a win-win for Eureka Springs. It fits. It's ecotourism, like Brandon said. That is the largest growing tourism in the nation. I totally support what's going on down there. I hope you guys can get behind it. It's nothing but good for the town, for the economy. It is going to jumpstart the economy around here. This little Victorian village has to try and re reinvent itself to stay current with what tourism is all about. Victorian homes are cool, but that's not going to support us into the future, man. <laughs> it's going to take something like what is happening now. I, I, I encourage you guys to embrace this gift that's been given to us and and let let it happen. There's been more ecological work done in the park since this downhill thing started than there's ever been done in the park. Everybody's worried about checking the ecology down there. This has helped more eco eco ecology and um, research in the park since the park opened. Thank you for your time. Please get behind this. Hi, I'm Kent Butler. I uh, work at the Great Passion Play. I was born here in Eureka Springs, raised in Berryville. My wife has worked at the Passion Play since she was five. I've worked at the Passion Play since I was 16. We now have a home in Eureka Springs as of 2014 and plan to stay here for a long, long time. Um, it's the most beautiful place in the world. And things like the downhill project at Lake Leatherwood make it even more so that I want to stay here for the rest of my life. And I think that's what we have to ask ourselves when we're making determinations of what does Eureka Springs look like in 50 years, right? 50 years ago is when the Great Passion Place started. We will have our 50th year anniversary. May 4th is when we open 50 years in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. You can applaud for that in the middle of my speech. <laughs> but I understand. You guys can give more applause later. Uh, we actually have a major... Um, complimentary project and when Justin uh, moved here to Eureka Springs as Parks Commissioner he said something in the newspaper he said we will have trails and trail connectivity everywhere I like a person who speaks with integrity and does what he says because that is exactly what Justin has done and that's exactly what the Parks Commission has m commissioned him to do is to pursue other means to make sure that we have connectivity that is the passion plays desires to continue to be connected to the town. 50 years from now, I hope we celebrate 100 years of the Passion Play. But we will know that there is something amazing also happening at the Passion Play. That the Walton family, and I'm not sure how all the invoices work out. <laughs> when I open a gift, I, I uh, look at the name on the gift, but I also, when I open the gift, I acknowledge the huge, huge thing that it is. The Passion Play not has directly received. The gift is not money. The gift has been the trails. Five miles of trails will open at the Passion Play designed for all user groups on May 1st of this year. <laughs> That's on private property. Uh, you guys can't do anything with it. Nobody in this room can do anything with it. Maybe the banks, but that's a different story. May 1st, five miles open. And a, a couple, within a couple of years, the plan is 18 miles of trails designed for all user groups. So not only do we have more advanced trails at Lake Leatherwood, including like, you know, State High School. Good job for coming, man. That is awesome. Awesome job. Uh, but not only was the high school mountain bike championship for Arkansas held at Lake Leatherwood, but we will have other races held in Eureka Springs now. And we have advanced riders areas as well as beginner rider areas. There was a five-year-old who started to ride on the Passion Play Trails. Now, it's not open right now. That was somebody who could ride. You have to get permission. Or, no, there's no permission before May 1st. So <laughs> May 1st is when those trails will open five miles on the Passion Play, over 18 miles, and uh, help celebrate the 50th year anniversary of the Passion Play. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, my name is Bo Satori. I've lived in Eureka Springs for 42 years. And in 1979, uh, Eureka Springs celebrated its uh, bicentennial, or centennial, excuse me, its centennial. And I was on city council, as all of you are now, and we did all to, uh, to celebrate the city we love. But as I looked around, uh, Leatherwood was an embarrassment. It had been abandoned or neglected for decades. All of our um, uh, spring reservations looked really bad. Uh, Harvard Park, everything was just not being taken care of. And so we worked through 1980 to create a Parks Commission in order to have a nucleus by which uh, volunteers and the city oversight could work to start cleaning up all of our our parks and get them uh, beautiful again. And uh, so then throughout the 80s, um, there was really no money. The city's always broke. Uh, but there was plenty of volunteers and meetings, and everybody would rally to do whatever we could to make everything better. Uh, then along in, uh, in the 90s, well, we started working towards getting uh, some temporary taxes with sunsets passed to uh, finance and support them. And then when we got to 99, as when I came on as mayor, there was already a grant to the commission uh, for a quarter million dollars to build the ball fields at Leatherwood. And so, but there was a lot of resistance to it. And I met out there with state officials and with the planning commission, lots of individuals, and it all came down to a tree cut permit. And they were trying to stop the building of the ball fields by opposing the tree cut. And in my conversations with the state official, they made it pretty clear that when they grant money to a city like ours, and then we turn around and don't do it or don't use it or refuse it, then we're less likely to get much consideration the next time they have an application or any type of funding. And so we got that passed. We built the ball fields. They kept getting more grants, getting better all the time. We had lots of volunteers, dirt work, everything. It became a spectacular accomplishment, which all of you should have been out there and enjoyed by now. And uh, with the, uh, also 20 years ago, we started building the trails. We worked on Black Bass Lake. We worked on Leatherwood. Uh, the trails were, were a great asset and something to be very proud of. Lots of hard work by lots of volunteers. And, uh, and then with the uh, Fat Tire Festival, then we have hundreds of people coming once a year. And it, it gave us something to rally around. And, um, but then over the last 10 years, as they've been spending millions of dollars between Fayetteville and uh, Bentonville to build their trail system, I felt it's just kind of getting in the background. We, we were kind of like behind the door with all the hoopla with the trails. And when they came up with this concept of these gravity trails, I learned that this is something they can't do over there. They don't have the terrain for that. We have 2,000 acres to do it. And we also have the attention of the money to come into Eureka Springs to make that. And so in order to keep us as a prime location, <laughs> Let's vote for it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Haley. Um, I am in support of the downhill trails and any of the trail system here in Eureka Springs. I'm an avid hiker, first and foremost. Uh, being outdoors is definitely my passion. I do mountain bike, but wouldn't consider myself a serious rider. I enjoy getting out to Lake Leatherwood for um, time of time. Most of the times I'm usually walking or hiking by myself. Um, I enjoy the tranquility of that, but as a female and just being by myself, not a lot of people around, it does get a little uneasy at times for me. So I would love to see more users out at Leatherwood, um, enjoying the diversity of a trail system, and I feel bringing in the new downhill trails will bring in more users to the park and, like everyone else has said, elevate um, tourism in this town. So thank you. Hello, my name is Mary House, and I am working hospitality here. I am the activities director at the Basin and Crescent Hotels. And with that position, I double as a concierge. And I've worked with them for six years, and I can tell you that trails are awesome. They provide so much more, if not double, for things for people to do, especially families. One example recently, I had a family of four come to town who also brought their grandparents, making it a family of six. The dad and the son went out riding 
and all the women and the grandfather went shopping downtown spent all weekend doing that and they're coming back again next year to join us for more events and things so I'm for trails and I hope you guys are too at uh, in public comments I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, yep. Jay. Go ahead. Yeah. You're here. Okay. Yep. We we got another one. We have lots more. Sorry, I've never come uh, before city council in, uh, in my 22 years, but you'll get but three minutes, and I'll tell you when to start. Who else wants to sign up? Joey, you wanted to? It's fair. Yeah. We're going to let one to let everybody okay. do it. Okay. I'm Jay Ertel. I've been here about 22 years. Um, never come before you guys to speak, but I uh, figured that uh, this was an important enough uh, subject matter and whatnot that I uh, wanted to make sure uh, that I showed up and uh, and, and uh, supported it. Um, you know, I feel like this is the most uh, exciting news that Eureka's had in probably 30 years uh, as far as opportunities go. Um, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and, and you know we really not, uh, need not to mess it up. Um, we need your support, um, and your support of the park specifically. Um, we thank you for your uh, thank you for your support. Um, you know, mentioned so far tonight. Um, you know, I support the parks, I support the trails, the downhill, the donors, and, and the great residents of Eureka Springs. Um, you know, the downhill is a very small part um, of the great benefits to come. I mean, I think we've kind of focused on that a little bit because it's the first, um, the first, uh, the first project. Um, but I think it's it's a lot bigger picture than that. I hope we don't get hung up on on you know I you know I like to bike. I don't downhill, um, but I, th I still think it has a lot of benefits for it. And you know, if, if we uh, if we mess up this this uh, this first one, um, you know, the, the rest of it probably probably won't follow. Um, you know, there's widespread uh, support uh, throughout the community. We've heard lots and lots of folks are behind this. Um, you know, and, and of course you're going to have uh, some folks that aren't. But unfortunately, um, you know, you know, life we, we can't uh, make everybody happy you know, as hard as we try. Um, you know, Eureka has ten times the potential um, for a great uh, biking community compared to what is next door, and they're doing it uh, so well next door. Um, we've just got even even more to offer. Um, you know, it's going to happen around us, and uh, whether or not you know we participate or not, um, I really think we need to embrace the opportunity versus sitting on the sidelines and watching our economy flounder or deteriorate. Uh, we need to get on board with today's regional interest in biking and let our and let benefit our tourism industry and our residents to follow. Uh, thanks for your support and uh, and for helping make this a success. Hello, I'm Jody English Brown, and I apologize for being late to t this evening, and very much appreciate a moment. Uh, I'll be brief. I am very much in support of trails tonight. I particularly enjoyed listening to Bo Satori, uh, the history of the Parks Commission. I'm in support of trails, but I'm really here to be in support of our Parks Commission. They are professionals. They are dedicated to what they are doing. I know that I feel that my education on this subject has come from many of the people that are on the Parks Commission. And the more you talk to them, you feel their passion, and they aren't, they aren't uh, operating arbitrarily. They are really looking into everything that they are doing. They're making very informed decisions. I applaud those decisions. I applaud their dedication to our community. And I think it's timely, and I think we need to give them our support. Thank you. All right. If there's nothing else, we will close the public comments. But I do want to appreciate and thank all the citizens that came and, and uh, voiced their comments, pro and con. Uh, that's what this is about, and especially for your your time in through here. So, And thank you for keeping it brief and going through these three minutes. So uh, that brings us to our first order of business, which is uh, an application from Ambassador Transport to operate a taxi service. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Uh, 
All right. Uh, anybody got any want to lead off on this? Isn't the guy here? Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to? Isn't that who leads off? All right. Are you with the ambassador? Or? Yes, sir. Um, uh, what was your name again? Billy Dethridge. All right. Uh, you want to state your application and what's going on? Um, I'm just trying to. I already own a taxi service, so I'm just trying to see if I can work up here and put one car up here. <coughs> um, I've just. I've got a couple minivans and a couple town cars. And I've got a digital dispatch system, so when somebody calls in, then it all goes into the system, and then we go pick up the people. So. All right. Yes, ma'am. Mitch Snyder. How thoroughly have you researched Eureka and taxi usage? Um, well, I really haven't. I used to live in Berryville. i got relatives living in Berryville and Eureka, and I've been back and forth and everything. And I know that... I visited the, um, all these little stores and stuff, and I see tons of people and stuff, and I know at nighttime people tend to drink. And then running an ambassador for like four years now, I've had numerous calls asking for a taxi service that they need somebody to come up here and pick them up. Well, because I, worked, I was on council when we worked on this issue before, okay. and um, the research done on the needability of taxis, it's not good. Um, we've got two companies already, and, and they okay. pretty much, you know, I'd, I'd hate to see you waste time and money yeah. on it's something. It's not much money. What I'm wanting to do is, like, maybe get somebody local that lives here, you know, and then it wouldn't, I'm not wasting a lot of money and stuff because I already have hired dispatchers and everything, so we're already doing the work. We're just not doing it up in this area. So I'm thinking just a few calls that I do get, then maybe I can give someone else a job and an opportunity to make some work up here. I understand your concept, though. It's a small town. and It's, it's like Bentonville was a small town at one time, and then it blew up. <laughs> and even listen to everybody, it's like, wow, this place is going to get as big as Bentonville or Rogers or Fayetteville, you know? So I'm no like way. Trying, to, <laughs> trying to grow with it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mr. Kendricks. Um, yes. Um, my comment is simply that I am opposed to monopolies and I um, am going to vote for their application for that sole reason. Mr. McClellan? Uh, I guess this question is for the clerk. Is, is the application, is it complete? Is it must be because they submit, you, you brought it before us. Is that there isn't an application like there is for... Tours and that kind of thing. Typically, what has happened in the past, what a company would prepare information, a sales packet for distribution to council, and uh, that's how it's done. But there isn't a form that's been created for that purpose. I thought we had something in the past. No. And the reason for that, really, Terry, is because it was a franchise. Seems like when it's the last time that they came up was uh, maybe it was something different, but but that but we 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 had they had to had to put them off put them off till they got everything in that that you needed. That Not for a taxi. I'm thinking of something else. Maybe food trucks. Oh, the carriage. Oh, the carriage, probably. Mm. Mm. Ms. Snyder? Um, would it be appropriate to ask if we could hear from both Fuzzy and Anthony in regards to the other two to see if we could get some kind of an idea of how much business? I know when... Um, well, we're not into that we're into deciding on his application. Right. Well, when Anthony's group was applying before, we heard from Fuzzy in regards to how much business and various business people. Well, I think that uh, if you want to defer this and, and do your own research, then you know it's up to them to make their own research, whether or not it's a valid 
uh, business operation. We're just here yeah. to determine whether or not you want to grant the application. Yes, I sir. could ask a question of the attorney. Why are they coming to us for a business license? We don't approve business licenses for other businesses. Pardon? It's a code requirement. For what? We have to grant them a um, certificate of need in order for them to of be able need? to need for Public. them to be able Pardon? to be able to operate within our city. Yeah. And the code is cited if you want to read it. Votes? Yes, sir. Did I hear the attorney correctly? He said that the reason they're before council is they're coming to get from us a certificate of need. Public necessity. It's called public necessity. So it's if it's showing that there is a need for it. Within well, the city. then doesn't that go back to Mickey's question of have we assessed there is a need because I'm, I'm just a little concerned. We're sitting here with somebody wanting it and then we're going to issue a certificate of need but we don't we don't know if there is a need. So I'm getting a little confused here. Mr. McClung? Um, we kind of went, I think I remember correctly on this, that, that the last time we did this that that, uh, that uh, David came to us and told us that he didn't think there was enough need for another one either yet we approved it uh, so you know I don't I don't think we can say no to this one on that same basis you know I mean, if, if there's not a need then they won't hang around <laughs> you know that's just kind of how that goes mm. Mm. Okay. Ms. Snyder um, I think Terry and I were both in council during that time it wasn't so much that Fuzzy had said yay or nay, it was the fact that it was one business and one person and we didn't feel that all the needs were being met. And the need part, Mayor, is what I was talking about, um, about asking them how their business is going so we would know needs. But, you know, that's the big thing is knowing is it needed or not is the big thing not how many do we have doing it but as small as the town is and seasonal has always been the problem in regards to taxis mr mitchell i i understand everybody's argument totally and i totally believe in in councilman kendrick's i, I don't i don't support monopolies i don't support in any way shape or form creating monopolies and i don't think cities should get into monopolies because where do you stop? The next monopoly is restaurants or gift stores or et cetera, et cetera. And, and so it's a slippery slope should you want to start down that path. You, you, you need to be a little careful. I I'm, I'm guess I'm just a little hung up on if, if we say go with this that we're issuing a certificate of need and to me then I would need to know if there was a need before I did it. I, I'm just I must be tired or something tonight because that's not computing. I think where my my comments are coming from is that <clears throat> you ask any competitor if there's a need, they're going to say no. Uh, I think it's up to the applicant to supply that need. Yes, I agree. Now, if you want, if the council wants to defer this and require them to come back with more information, I yes. think that's your prerogative. If you want to based on um, what other competitors are saying you know I mean I can I mean that's also an option uh, Mr. McClellan you had your hand up did you or well it's just that you know they there's no way I know how to determine whether there's a need or not unless you bring in an outside firm to do a study what are you going to do I, I, we're not going to do that so you know what determines the need or not is if you give them a, you give them a, a certificate of need and they open up and uh, they either they either all people or they don't you know they're going to stick around or they're going to leave that's going to be how you're going to determine the need you know I, I I don't think it's it's fair to treat anybody differently than we did 
David on the when we did it the last time. So you know, I, I just I don't know how else to do it. Ms. Kendrick, <coughs> I, I think that the fact that they applied uh, creates a presumption that there is a need, and that it is up to their competitors to show up and argue otherwise. It's on their burden once they have shown up and submitted this application, which they haven't done. So I, I think that the presumption remains that there is a need because they applied for such a job. What do you mean they haven't done? Anthony got right up there and said I'm he was against I didn't it. See him. Fuzzy was right oh, that's over right. there. I apologize, you did. Fuzzy I came to the meeting so he could speak. We just have to allow them to speak. Well, I think he should be allowed to speak okay. this, in this. If the council wants to go ahead and allow them to speak, we can... Mm -hmm. Make that contentious. Well, you guys want to know, so there you go. There's that, and there's Fuzzy. The, the way of the council. Oh, Fuzzy. Way back there. Go ahead and, and uh, hear from David. All right. I saw that. Is that a bribe? <laughs> they're, they're, they're fat free, so no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're not policemen. Donuts doesn't do it. <laughs> uh, All right, uh, now David's up here. Let's please. All right. I think there should be consideration. Would you here. state who you are, please, sir? I know who you are. I'm David White. All right. And I run the taxi here for 29 years, seven days a week. I haven't missed a day. There is a need, to a certain extent, in this town, which is being met. Uh, and the evidence is, the people that are now running the other cab against me are the eighth people to run against me. They've all quit in two years. The damage they do, figuring out there's not enough need, hurts the town. The laws are written to create goodwill, not to look behind your back and see who's stealing your people or camped out or whatever, and free enterprise encourages that. That's why this is a different license than any other business in town, other than Swepco and the gas company. Uh, my understanding, I, I got an anonymous phone call. They blocked the number to tell me to come down here. So they didn't want me to know who it was. My understanding is that there needs to be a notice in the paper. There needs to be a notice sent to me to be prepared for this. And they need to give evidence that the need is not being met, not I feel like trying it. Uh, th there's too much commitment here. It isn't about money. It's about commitment. And you per it is somewhat protected in state law to recognize the commitment that somebody makes, not to come in here on Friday and Saturday night, scoop the gravy, and then not do anything. I'd advise you to talk to the hospital. I've called 50 times from there. Ask them how many times I don't show up. Ask them how long it takes. There's people that have used me 50 times in town. Talk to those people. You don't have to hire someone else. I mean, people that have three or four cars don't know. And uh, I, I, uh, I think that uh, the repercussions of having another one, it's been bad for the town. The people that are running now are not Cody Stucy. Cody Stucy that got up here and promised you guys the world with all his cars over there never, never put those into effect. And he was gone in two years. These people have been here for two years. I can go back other people. Two years is about enough to go, this ain't worth it. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't create goodwill. It doesn't make your cab driver the best member of the Chamber of Commerce when you don't treat them with the respect that they have earned by doing it. Um, I, I think this uh, at least should be postponed, and I think there should be some more serious consideration. And the, uh, the idea of they just try it, I'm going to react to this. I have to, I have to pay the same amount of insurance on less business. None of you know how much it costs right now to ride the cab. None of you know what it cost five years ago. You know, I think you're dealing with something and you're just throwing it out there and let's just see what fish go and get what. And it doesn't create a pretty picture. It, it isn't good for tourism. It's not a good uh, way to create a member of the Chamber of Commerce that meets everybody first and last. And that's really what the taxi driver is. And uh, you know, the character of the people, uh, as far as a state law uh, license goes, the character of the person applying is the only means to reject a license. Uh, I, th I think there's a lot, little more going on here than we're going to have another restaurant or another convenience store or whatever. 
Anyway, I appreciate you thinking about it, and uh, and uh, I'll continue to run. I agree 100 percent. You want to state your name again? Oh yes, sir. It's Anthony McBride. I agree 100 percent with Fuzzy. Um, the business to me isn't there for a third taxi service. Um, we we run 24/7 as well. I I employ full time a uh, local that drives here. That's always on. Um, and we may, if we're lucky, during the week, we may, during the slow time, we may get one or two calls a day if we're lucky. And the slow time for us lasts from about the start of December into November till till about this time now, maybe another couple more weeks. But uh, even in the busy time, we're not super busy with in-town runs. It's or during the week, we're not busy with local um, people. We're and usually the most of the business comes on the weekend, in which I believe that we handle everybody just fine. Everybody that we drive. I mean, not 100% of everybody, but 95% of everybody is very happy with our service, and and that's all I have to say. So, thanks. Thank you. All right. Ms. Green? I, maybe you can refresh my memory. Years ago, we had that referendum vote for the taxis. I know, Mickey, you remember it. What was that for? Was that to bust the Who franchises or... That was to limit it to two businesses only simply because there wasn't that much call for the use and we didn't want to have pretty much what has just been said in regards to them not lasting, the expense that they would go into, the, the, the bad name of the town because in, in bars and restaurants they have business cards and stuff that have the taxi names and the numbers. So someone's eating dinner, they've had a few drinks, the trolleys are done running, running, whatever. So they would be given this card or this number to call and they couldn't get anybody because the bars and the restaurants didn't know the company had quit. So by limiting, you always know or you pretty much know who you can call, who is available. It made it a whole lot better for the experience of the people coming here or, and wanting to utilize, which makes it better for the city. Why would you want to have like 10 taxi companies <coughs> for five people? I mean, you know, this is what it came down to. So we were limiting the amount, the number of franchises, however you want to put it, to keep it decent and fair and good for everyone. It's the same code. Hmm? Is this in code? Uh, it's been a number of years. It no. should. I don't know how, what we have written out. I is don't remember. Question? Well, is was it in code? A limit of two yeah. services? Yes. It is not. It is yeah. not. Okay. Mr. Mitchell. You know, I, I again, I I understand <coughs> Councilman Kendrick's point of view. I have been probably a raging capitalist most of my life. So <laughs> the concept of a monopoly bothers me greatly and I remember having this problem when we were discussing the carriages and that huge fiasco that turned into but you know in this case I will go against my norm of being a raging capitalist because I don't see that there is a need for a third taxi, and so I will probably vote against this. Mr. Snyder. One quick little point. A monopoly is one, not two. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting further discussion. And what would say, uh, I think there was a motion. We have no motion. No motion. I make a motion that we do not expand at this point. We do not what? That we do not expand oh. our taxi services. You deny the application. Point. Okay, I make a motion we deny the application. Nothing personal, guys. I'll the, second that. Okay. Discussion? Hearing no further discussion, uh, all those in favor of. Uh, Can we do a voice vote, please? Okay. Wow. A I mean, motion a to call, deny the call. application by roll call. Terry McClung. No, 
motion is to deny that, the application. Now is that this is to deny the application. So a yes, a yes, be, a yes denies it. A yes denies it. Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Nay. Ms. Green? Nay. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Oh, this kills me, but yes. 4 2. All right. Thank you. Uh, that brings us up to our, our second order, which uh, deferred the uh, ordinance to uh, the Planning Commission uh, on the BNB regulations and also the uh, ordinance. Item number three, the ordinance for paying the down payments was deferred. Which brings us to ordinance number 2264, um, diversion of grant funds on the second reading. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. I just included for everyone's information a copy of the newspaper article that I referenced two weeks ago. Yep. Because some people uh, have forgotten it. And uh, oh, okay. it's just oh. a kind of a historical document as to how we got here. Okay, further discussion? Okay, get a, can I get a motion to uh, read Ordinance 2264 by title to suspend the rules and uh, read the ordinance by title only? Oh. Yes. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Hold on just a moment, please. Ms. Green? What, what's the motion? To suspend the rules and... Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Second. Yes, yes. Light that alone then. Yes. Ms. Schneider? <laughs> yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Six zero. Ordinance number 2264, an ordinance clarifying the use of funds received for grants approved by or applied for under city council authority. Okay, get a motion to approve. Uh, so moved. Second. Question. Yes. Um, I didn't bring that with me. Can let's see what was it? Per, uh, Number two that we had the problem with that was that rewritten and for this it for tonight after we didn't, all was we said didn't change and done, anything the the original ordinance was read because that's how it went okay I couldn't remember that's all I need any any further discussion all right all those in favor of uh, ordinance twenty two sixty four uh, on a second reading signify by saying aye aye. aye. Any opposed? It's so moved. So you were going to pass it down to him, that's right. And said he didn't want, didn't need it. All right. Uh, we're going to go on to item number five. Uh, outcome of the workshop on North Street and City Auditorium for meetings. Motion to discuss. Second. 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 Uh, it was good meet, good uh, good workshop. I think the ultimately the item uh, was to end up looking. Uh, on the downstairs at the gym uh, to come up with uh, more information on the cost of converting that into a meeting space. Uh, Ms. Snyder, you had your... Oh, well, that's what I was going to do. Mr. Mitchell? They asked me to. Y yes, uh, that probably will surprise a lot of folks out there because they probably were thinking something different. But uh, based on that, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we... City Council asked the mayor to do an assessment of the city auditorium gym space for future meetings of uh, the city of Eureka Springs and bring back to council a cost estimate of uh, in phases, maybe a phase one, phase two, or whatever is his choice. Uh, hopefully at some point by at least uh, the middle of April at the latest. Second. Ms. Snyder? Um, I think we need to clarify that. 
I'd like to make an amendment to that. Would you please bring us back a costing on what it will take to put in an elevator and a unisex handicap accessible bathroom downstairs? At that point, then we can go from there because... Uh, I, okay. I think that's understandable. Mm -hmm. I don't think the I think that needs, needs to be, to be clarified, those two I, items. I, if I don't bring back what you want, you can chastise me. No, just oh look boy. at those two items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I understand. I mean, I can't do... We can't proceed without that information. Yeah, well, those now, are if you want, okay, if you want to make the amendment, go go right ahead. Well, I'm just saying those are the two we have to have right. a number. Is on. there a second to the amendment? Go ahead. Hearing go none. Care. We're back to the the original motion. Do we have a roll call? Any further discussion? Okay. No further discussion. Uh, or uh, clarification. Okay. For people watching, <laughs> any plans that we have for the gym would be ADA accessible. Oh, yes, <laughs> including the ADA bathroom downstairs. So an elevator. And access. an elevator for accessibility. Right. Correct. All right. Further discussion? Okay. Roll call. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Oh, yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Six zero. Okay. Uh, I'll um, bring you. Bring I would like to something. make a further motion um, that we um, look into uh, converting North Street into some sort of income producing property, whether it be by sale of North Street or by a long term lease, so that we can um, hopefully use. Well, that's my motion. It's right I'll there. second. Okay, further discussion? If I may clarify, add something, not for the motion, but to explain it, um, what we're trying to do is hopefully um, produce enough uh, money from North Street to handle the cost of the renovation in the gym. <coughs> Mr. Mitchell? Isn't that a given? Would we do that anyway? I'm, I'm Not necessarily. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Further discussion, Mr. McClung? Yeah, I think that's a little premature until we, until we see the feasibility for downstairs. I don't want to necessarily rule out Norris Street yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I think everyone's real positive with, with, with downstairs, and and you know the fingers are sure crossed that. It, that we could work a deal out, and 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 if that happens, then what she's suggesting is definitely in order. But but it, it, I just don't want to do that now until we have numbers and we know what direction we're going specifically. Miss Green. Well, I'm kind of like David. No money, no mission. I don't think we're. I think what Christy and that is asking, and what I second, is just to look into it if it's a viable way if we sell it or get a long-term lease if we can use that money. I, I don't mean we have to do it. I, I, it just, could you look into it? Right. Ms. Kendrick? No, that's, that's what I thought the motion was. I am simply <laughs> suggesting that we look into converting the property I into income somehow. Yeah. And um, I don't think that that meant that we have to do it by the next Yeah, meeting. and that's what I seconded. All right, further I discussion? Mean, I misunderstood. Okay. No further discussion. All those in favor of the motion uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Uh, that brings us up to um, item number six, uh, discussion like Lake Leatherwood Park sales tax, Ms. Kendricks and Ms. Green. Yes. I would like to move that we make, that we discuss that topic. Second. Um, okay. May I? Certainly. Um, I want to preface what I feel I have to tell you with a statement of my devotion to the Eureka Springs Parks. I love Lake Leatherwood, Black Bass Lake, and the trails throughout the city. I want the Parks Commission to succeed. However, I have learned several things that I feel I must share with the public. 
all of whom I know equally love our parks in the interest of bettering our parks. I have been asked by several constituents to intervene in the Park Commission's in construction of the mountain biking trails being constructed pursuant to the Parks Commission's contract with the NWA Trailblazers since my constituents had told me that these trails are being built without proper environmental review and without adequate public input. My response has been that there is not much that City Council could do about these trails absent overseeing the Park Con Commission's acquisition of easements over on pro private property and holding the Parks Commission to its master plans for Lake Leatherwood and the city trail system, neither of which contemplate these mountain biking trails. However, after perusing the Park Commission's enabling legislation and the ordinances approving the park sales tax for Leatherwood, I've come to the conclusion that I was wrong. The Parks Commission is acting beyond its scope of authority and not solely in constructing these trails. The Parks Commission's enabling leg legislation states that the Parks Commission has authority only over revenues from parks operation, which is known statutorily as the Park Fund. And I refer you to um, Arkansas Code Annotated 14269. 205 A and B. It further states that the Parks Commission shall submit quarterly shall submit quarterly reports, including accountings and an annual audit to the mayor and city council, and that the city council may appropriate funds over and above the park fund for the operation of the parks. And that's Arkansas Code Annotated 14269-206. Since I have been on council, I do not recall getting quarterly reports and accountings and annual audits. I certainly have not been asked to appropriate any funds for the operation of the parks or to approve funding of Park Commission's budget. In 2013, a Lake Leatherwood City Park sales tax was approved by the City Council which tax was extended indefinitely the end of last year. Nothing in those ordinances delegate city council's authority to appropriate disbursements from the sales tax funds to the Parks Commission. The only limitations on the use of the fund by the city council is that it be used in accordance with the approved Lake Leatherwood City Park Master Plan. That's ordinance number 2176 passed in 2013. I was surprised to read at lunch today that the Parks Commission allocated part of this money last Monday. The Parks Commission cannot spend this money. It must be appropriated by City Council. In addition to this lack of City Council appropriation of funds, I have noted a couple of very serious problems with the Leatherwood sales tax. First, the ballot extending the tax indefinitely refers to ordinance number 2178. Ordinance number 2178 relates to outdoor sales, not the Leatherwood sales tax. This is what you looked at when you voted. The proper ordinance number, as I said, is 2176. This anomaly invalidates the entire tax. This is a very, very serious error which may require the rebate of all sales tax collected after the initial sunset date. Second, the city clerk has been unable to locate a city council ordinance or resolution approving the Lake Leatherwood City Park Master Plan. She was able to provide me with a copy of the Lake Leatherwood City Park Master Plan dated November 13th, or, or November 2013, eight months after the date passed referring to the master plan. So the master plan I have is eight months later. Is it the same plan? It, in any case, it appears that the Leatherwood Master Plan in any version was never approved. The question is then, 
can the Leatherwood sales tax be used in accordance with the approved Leatherwood master plan if the Leatherwood master plan was never approved? The city clerk did provide me with a copy of resolution number 642, which was dated July 14, 2014, approving the Eureka Springs master trail plan and a copy of that plan dated two months later, interestingly, September 3rd, 2014. So we have the approval of the master plan in July and a plan dated in September. I can't reconcile that. I do note, however, that neither the Leatherwood City Park master plan nor the Trails master plan contemplate any mountain biking trails other than one downhill challenge trail. I'm told that the scope of the mountain biking trails being built far exceed one downhill challenge trail. Um, and in fact, Parks Commission Chair Bill Featherstone acknowledged this in a Parks Commission meeting on November 21st of 2017. Additionally, the Parks Commission did not have the authority to enter into the agreement between the Parks Commission and Northwest Arkansas Trailblazers dated November 21st, 2017. The statutes authorizing the Parks Commission do not permit any such contracts. Only City Council can enter into such contracts. In addition to entering into the Northwest uh, uh, NWA Trailblazers Agreement, the city or the Parks Commission committed $50,000 in that agreement to the construction of the project without city council appropriation of those funds. The Parks Commission, under the direction of Chair Bill Featherstone, has accomplished wonderful things. However, Mr. Featherstone seems to have recently taken the Parks Commission in dangerous directions. Much of what is going on at the Parks Commission seems to be a result of Mr. Featherstone's allegiance to the Community Center Foundation. Recently, the diversion of the grant for the Dairy Hollow Trail to the Foundation has focused the City Council's um, on that direction. I just learned that Mr. Featherstone has also been focusing the Park Parks Commission employees on other Foundation projects such as a greenhouse. Mr. Featherstone doesn't seem to understand or acknowledge that, that he has this conflict. And he doesn't seem to recognize that he is illegally diverting government resources to a private entity. In this and other endeavors, Mr. Featherstone has not recognized the Park Commission's statutory responsibilities to report to the mayor and the city council or the Park Commissioner's dependence on the City Council for funds appropriation. He has also taken the Parks Commission beyond its authority and jurisdiction, entering into the agreement with the NWA Trailblazers and asserting authority over unopened streets and alleys which have nothing to do with the Master Trails Plan. I believe there is good cause to remove Mr. Featherstone from the Parks Commission. In the very least, the Parks Commission must be held to the statutory and city code requirements in that it, one, seek approval of the Leatherwood Master Plan. I recognize that that plan may well be outmoded since the Park Commission has sought to build trails inconsistent with that master plan. Since that is the case, I expect that the Parks Commission will have to update that plan as well as the approved trails master plan, which the Parks Commission also seems to be acting inconsistently with, and therefore the trails master plan appears also to need updating too. In conjunction with rewriting the master plans, the Parks Commission should seek proper environmental review and public input and should take such public input to heart. Three, submit quarterly reports and accountings to the Mayor and City Council and an audit for the year 2017. Four, address the very, very serious problem of the incorrect ordinance number being referred to in the ballot extending 
the Leatherwood sales tax. Five, seek city council appropriation of the parts of Parks Commission's budget that exceeds the park fund, i.e. the revenue obtained from the Parks Commission operations. Due to the incorrect ordinance number being referred to in the ballot extending the Leatherwood sales tax, and the fact that the Leatherwood master plan has never been approved, the city council may not be able to appropriate any part of the Leatherwood sales tax, and the Parks Commission may have serious financial issues to address. As part of the city council, I will do everything I can to allay those challenges. I have agonized over reporting these issues to the public because I do not want to hurt our parks or the Parks Commission. But if I were not to report these issues, the city could be facing a very serious taxpayer suit over the Le Leatherwood sales tax and members of the public concerned about departures from the master plans would have no voice. I was shocked when this council approved the downhill trail without ever looking at a plan. I am not opposed to that, but I just can't believe that th this council did not look into this more fully. Mr. Mitchell. Well, that was a lot to digest. Hey, but I think if I render it down, I think it would be advisable for council to request that Councilman Kendrick's presentation be forwarded to the city attorney and the municipal league to render a decision back since it has so many multi-facets to it and I would like to have uh, very strongly a municipal league and a city attorney uh, a complete assessment because again she covered a heck of a lot of territory and I understand some of it and some of it I don't agree with and some of it I'm going okay that makes sense especially the part about the, the wrong ordinance number being there and the validity of the tax all that stuff about the trails and all I'm, I'm not buying off on that sorry but I, I do think we should give serious consideration to allowing the mayor and the, the city attorney to uh, engage the municipal league, etc., taking everything that she said and, and uh, giving us a legal opinion. I you believe are. Nikki has. Um, Ms. Snyder? A um, couple of questions. When Eureka Springs City gets its audit done, doesn't that include all of our guys, meaning parks too? Um, when, when, when our annual audit is done, doesn't that yes. include? Okay, so the parks audit has actually been done just under the name of Eureka Springs. A printout of your points would have been helpful. This was way too much to try to follow and understand and know what's going on. So yeah, if at the next meeting you could bring us a printout, that would I be will helpful. Be happy. I've, I've made copies of what I just... Okay, that would be helpful so we know what's going on. But in the meantime, and because I did get lost, um, years ago when we first started the tax for parks, it was so they could have their own income, so they could more or less autonomously take care of our park system without having to run to mayor and or city council every five minutes. I don't know the exact wording of how things were finally written up, but that was the whole point. They do their thing. We don't micromanage because they're the specialists, we're not. So, like I said, I got really lost with that whole list. They have their income. I don't understand what we're supposed to be getting the money from, and I, you lost me. I have no idea. All I know is they have their income. It's supposed to be spent on expenses and costs or whatever of the various park needs. And the best of my knowledge, that's what they do. So like I said, a printout will help, but otherwise um, I will never agree to micromanage, that's for sure. Mr. McClellan? Um, two things that, that I... Uh, uh, 
listened to there that 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 caught my attention, and one is 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 the ordinance number that she mentioned. I don't know if that's you know that certainly if that is not correct, I don't know how it was done that way, but it needs to be corrected. Whatever we have to do to to get that straightened out and and make the and make the parks tax to be correct. Mr. Weaver looked into that. Okay. The second is. Uh, I feel that uh, you know, as far as appropriating that tax money to parks, that we did that when we took it upon ourselves to pass an ordinance for them for Leatherwood, and that's what that's for is is that Leatherwood tax, and and so that we gave our blessing for them to use that money accordingly by by uh, you know approving the ordinance to put that tax on the ballot. That's my... Mr. Weaver, would thing. you like to discuss what you talked with Municipal League? Yes. Earlier today, <coughs> somewhat in, in anticipation of some of what was read here a minute ago, uh, I approached the Municipal League and spoke with Mark Hayes, um, who is their Chief Legal Counsel, and Mark's opinion was that it is a Scribner's error that the number is two numbers off. And that to correct it, he suggested that this council pass a resolution that informs the county election commission that the number was inadvertently uh, put into the document incorrectly as a Scribner's error and that we are thereby referring to the correct document through the resolution. Uh, as to what Mr. McClung just said, it's my understanding also that by originally appropriating the tax, uh, the city did what Ms. Kendrick is referring to by referring that money to be used by the parks. And it is my understanding, again, as the mayor said, <coughs> that we're audited yearly, and that part of the audit includes the money that's spent from all the various departments and commissions, and that includes the parks. Just, just real quick, I just wanted to make sure people knew this is not the first time we've had an erroneous number get switched. This has happened several times in the past. Unfortunately. Okay. Mr. Mitchell? Well, very good. You consulted, just you anticipated and took a, got a consult going based on that data. Um, so the rest of the stuff that was read to us, which oh, there's no way I can remember it, but it had a lot to do with master trails and that not following the master trails plan and all, but doesn't doesn't that still fall under the jurisdiction of parks based on the statute and the municipal code that we have that it's their right to, to, to deal with with that? So there's, you don't see any, because they didn't follow the master plan and, and all the stuff that she read, that that's really a negative, is it? Is, did something wrong happen? From the best of what I can gather, and, and I certainly have not looked at it probably as thorough as Ms. Kendrick, but I don't see any inappropriate behavior at this point. Uh, as to the master plan, plans are made and revised repeatedly. And the city has going back over the 20 odd years that I've been around here, 30 odd years, changed their plan of how the city operates and had various plans that have come and gone. Not speaking of the master plan for the park, but of the city itself. That's interesting because the executive summary here says it's not 
It is not one of these master plans that she'll set on the shelf. It's intended to be a ready reference guide for management, cooperators, and all employees. And it's intended to be flexible enough to change with the times. It therefore would review it and update it annually, which obviously didn't happen. And the documents created in Brad, Brad Stokes, et cetera. So I, I kind of, I go back, I guess, to the, in, in the intent of what's going on. And I go back to Marx's transparency. I go back to the tone that comes out of parks to to the citizens and the individuals of of this intensity of promoting and and I understand that intensity and desire and push but sometimes I think it is needs to be tempered more to communicating in a much clearer broader fashion to everybody involved so that it carries everybody with them uh, it, sure, it didn't happen in this case, but at the same time, having been in business all these years, you know, there's sometimes that you just need to do it. You need to do it fast. And I don't know where this benefactor was in the process of the speed of which this needed to be done. But in all honesty, if somebody was going to do something for me with a $1.5 million dollars, and they kind of wanted it in a hurry, and I thought it was my jurisdiction, I would probably be speeding it up too. Ms. Kendricks? I just want to be on the record that I do not agree with everything the city attorney says. I think there are serious problems here. We don't have a Lake Leatherwood master plan, and we are supposed to be spending the money in accordance with an approved Lake Leatherwood master plan. We have serious problems with the tax, I think. And I think we also have a serious problem with the fact that the, that the Parks Commission, and I'm, I am very much in favor of the Parks Commission and of everything that they do. I believe that, that it's under the wrong leadership. I, I, I really do feel that. But I, I just... We're not getting the quarterly reports that we're supposed to get, and the accounting. And I, I don't think that we appropriated the funds by simply saying that we should assess a tax. We did not appropriate the funds. So, you know, this is just there's there's lots, lot. I mean, there are so many things going on wrong here. I do not want to blow up the downhill. This really isn't about the downhill trails. This is about the way the Parks Commission has been operating. And I really hope that the council starts thinking about this. And I'll be happy to pass this out. And I, I, I'm not going to make a motion now. I just want, I want the council to be considering this. Ms. Snyder? March 1st, I moved here 44 years ago. I've seen all of our parks 44 years ago. I have seen them in this last year. There has definitely not been any misappropriation of funds. There has not been any wrongdoing by parks. They have done an incredible job and probably easily 98% of town will agree with that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mr. Mitchell. When Ms. Kendricks ended her discussion there before the motion and she said, about the parks and the trails. I, I got it. I understand exactly where she's coming from. And I honestly have feel that the, that, the, that the commission has the opportunity to improve. I am glad to see Justin take more of a, of a lead and uh, communicate. I, I think that parks could, I think that parks I think that Parks could uh, consider rotating the chairs like other commissions do. 
I think uh, an infusion of a of a of a, of a more uh, communicative tone with the council and with the citizens in a more proactive manner. I believe Justin is quite capable of doing that. But uh, if I had anything to say to the commission, which I think they're the most honorable people in the world and their dedication and passion is, is unbelievable. I would never want to hamper that. But I, I would recommend that they really consider rotating the chair, looking at how they're, they're viewed in the public and, and try to engage in a much more proactive manner. And I think some of this could be avoided. Mr. McClung? Just that that's, uh, that's, you know, that's probably a good suggestion, <laughs> but, but they are an autonomous commission and they can do that however they want to. I, no, no, they're not. They're absolutely not. We have the power to regulate that commission and we have the power for just cause to take any person out and it's in the statute. And I am not saying that that's what I want to do, but, we, the, but no, the power still rests with the city council, sir. Mr. Green. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't understand a lot of this. Ms. Kendricks made a lot of points. Whether they're right or wrong, she still made some points that I know our lawyer answered some of them, but some of them, I guess I would feel more comfortable that we don't do anything tonight. We look at this in case there's something wrong. I, I don't want parks to get in trouble. I'm not against anything with parks, the downhill, any of that. I just, she wrote some very interesting things that I'm not sure if they're right or wrong. I want to make sure where we're at with this. I mean, she did bring up some extremely interesting points that I, I just think maybe need to be answered. Ms. Kennedy? Um, my point is simply that they are not autonomous. They, there are very clear statutory responsibilities to report to the council mm -hmm. on a quarterly basis. And I do not believe that, I, I believe that count, not intentionally, but that council is shirking its responsibility to appropriate tax funds. I don't think, I'm not even sure that legally, and I haven't, I admit I have not research this, but I'm not sure legally that council can delegate the appropriation of tax funds to a commission. Um, it, it's, we, we, we need to be on top of what's going on and we've been left out of the loop. Mr. Mitchell. I'd like to make a motion that we refer this issue to the city attorney and consult with the municipal league and the mayor to bring back uh, to this commission the 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 actions we need to take to clear this up. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion on that motion. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, <coughs> That brings us to our next item that uh, Ms. Kendricks uh, wanted to bring up. It's an item on the parks and the community center relationship. That was not my, that was oh, David. That was David, David, I'm sorry. I, I did, here we go. <laughs> sorry about this. I have some, a concern that came up and it was at the last, I'll find it here, at the last, uh, one of the last council meetings, I made a motion. Where did it go? Here it is. That was on. Um, no, that's not it. I've got it right here somewhere. Did you put it in, in your packet right here? Here it is. I knew I had it separate. And my concern with this topic is the relationship of parks to the community center. Now, I know we got started off on this with the grant. That's what kind of kicked it off because the grant to us was a grant that was had a resolution from the city council that was specific to the issue of Dairy Hall. We had the parks director at that time come to city council and give us this beautiful plan on what we would do with this grant and, and all the specifics and everything. Then all of a sudden, as I recall this process going on, uh, Justin, who arrives, is brand new, I, and I don't know 
the, the background of what happened with Justin or however, but he came to us and said he had this newer idea that, that would be different and we could do this a lot cheaper instead of paved. We could do it blah, 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 blah. Got all that. But then all of a sudden this grant that council had done a resolution for specific to Dairy Hollow all of a sudden is getting moved to the community center. And it's for this trail and this park around it, which a uh, um, cardiovascular park is a great idea. And it wasn't until today that all of a sudden, in, in, a, in a great discussion with somebody at this table, it became clear that the grant wasn't moved to the community center. It's, it's a grant for parks who applied for it and the city because it applies to the section of sidewalk that would go along the front of Highway 62 if only if the school board gives us the easement which then it means that the easement would be city property therefore the grant would be the same so I think what has and I was been very confused because I thought this grant very clearly was going to the community center and I had a major problem with the community center getting this grant because of it, we had a problem with the CAPC in the chamber in regards to a, another project and I'm aware of the fact that Justin applied to uh, the Parks Commission at the state on two different times about some trailhead stuff that was denied by the state quite firmly and I think we got chastised pretty good by it too that basically quit trying to apply for grants and putting them on private property. So I'm thinking, well, how could Justin get in, in the city get in this kind of a bind and we're doing with this other grant? Well, it turns out we're not, the bottom line. But then uh, there's one more issue that back on January the 8th at a city council meeting, I made a motion, and I'm going to read that motion for everybody again. To suspend all engagement with the Eureka Springs Community Center Foundation until such time as the City of Eureka Springs elected officials in conjunction with legal counsel has the opportunity to conduct in-depth due diligence on the Eureka Springs Community Center's Foundation's Articles of Incorporation, lease with the school district, and financial records of all income sources and detailed <coughs> expenses. Note the city of Eureka Springs suspend all engagement. So I have asked does the, that umbrella in my motion then cover the Parks Commission which is accountable to the city council because we can get rid of the commission or we can get into rid of individual commissioners. Does this motion then cover that? And I have been told by, by asking the city attorney feels it does. Now I understand we have this issue with the greenhouse going on. I guess we got some kind of agreement or something coming up with the greenhouse. Yes. And yeah, I'll have you come up in a second. And if that's the case, I think what we would probably handle that, we would probably have to at city council then make an exception for that so that that could proceed onward. But th this, to me, this motion covers the parks and any engagement with Eureka Springs Community Center until such time as that center provides to us their articles of incorporation, lease with the school district financial records so that we can do due diligence on of any type of business relationship with a private entity. So that's my comment. Mr. Mitron, and I <coughs> apologize because I believe my interpretation when I was reading this, this came under the working with a contract regarding the uh, community center for room at the council meetings. Um, when we moved to discuss and then I said that a contract was being prepared and a copy will go to the city attorney for review when it's brought, before it's brought to the council. This was in regarding to leasing a, the space up there for a meeting room. Then you made the motion to suspend all engagement my interpretation had to do with suspending all engagements in regarding to the lease of the community center room. 
That's it. Not in any other, you know, didn't have anything else to do. And so when the parks was doing the possibility of the greenhouse, I didn't see that as the same thing. I was still referencing, and I had stopped on engagement as far as the lease going, <laughs> as the lease goes. So it's my fault for misinterpreting your motion in that respect. <laughs> so, Ms. Kendricks. Ms. Kendricks. Um, I saw the Parks Commission discussion on the greenhouse, and I was really surprised. I, um, Mr. Featherstone was using we sometimes in relationship to the community center and sometimes in relationship to the Parks Commission. You couldn't even tell who he was talking about. He gets his position with one mixed up with the other. The, you cannot use governmental resources for the benefit of a public entity, um, um, unless you know there are mutual uh, benefits to it, I did not hear any mutual benefits in that conversation, and I just I think I think I understand Mr. Mitchell's concern about how the Parks Commission has gotten perhaps too wrapped up with the community foundation. Um, I, you know, this probably wouldn't happen if it didn't have a chair that served both positions. Um, but right now, I am hesitant. Every, every time I see parks getting involved with anything to do with the community foundation. Mr. McClung? Somebody want to enlighten me as what the greenhouse is? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Uh, come, come Justin, on. jump up here. Help us out here. Uh, the greenhouse project at the community center is something that came up with them. They had some fundings, a grant that that was going to come up. Uh, parks that did had, not involve the city. They did not involve the city. That is their <laughs> their own in deal, uh, and, and I do try hard to delineate these things uh, as we go forward. Um, we had in our schedule, in our budget last year $7,500 for a greenhouse, uh, much smaller uh, to the same ends, seed starts, native plants, all, all those types of things to help with some of those. Um, so this potential partnership allows us an immediate $7,500 benefit to the city by saving us that funding to build our own greenhouse. Um, the we have not formalized the agreement on the greenhouse. We had some con concerns and questions uh, still about it. The, the discussions were that without funding of any sort from parks that we would simply manage some with staff. I'd, I'd like to finish if you don't mind. Um, the, the, and that, that would be the only relationship, that maintenance costs, those things, and that was the model we were working towards. Now, step one of that was the location the community center had for the greenhouse was behind the building in the shade some other things with that I wasn't comfortable moving forward in that location we suggested a new location for the greenhouse that the foundation has since looked at so we are more inclined now we're inclined to move forward and create an MOU a formal MOU with the community center I do believe we have uh, uh, parallel goals while the community center is a contentious item I am very aware of I assure you uh, in our community in a standard arrangement a community center would probably be part of the parks and recreation system and it is a logical partnership I believe that offers educational potential financial rewards and, and, and benefits to us and, and is a community partnership that I believe is directly in our charter yes ma'am well staffing is not free to the yeah. Parks Commission. You know, we may not put up money, mm -hmm. but if we're putting up staff's time, we are contributing. And that's what I had understood, that um, the park's role was to staff the greenhouse. And that's what was said in that meeting. And it, mm -hmm. I don't know where, first of all, I don't know where the, the funds that pays the person that is going to staff that meeting mm -hmm. is coming from, because I've just now discussed how there are problems with with the Leatherwoods tax um, and and in any case that Leatherwood tax is devoted to Leatherwood 
Certainly. So if, if any of this person's time that is spent at this community center, th that's inappropriate. Well, I'm very and confused why you would suspect we would use Leatherwood money for an in-town project. We use Leatherwood money for Leatherwood Park and Leatherwood. Well, I don't know because you don't report to us the way you're supposed to. Okay. Um, we, we, we were very careful about our tax expenditures. I actually have a document I can show you on our Leatherwood taxes if you'd like the accounting of that. Uh, I have that with me and, and prepared. We, we do not, we keep separate accounts. We keep uh, those, those revenue streams accounted for and balances for each of those accounts. And, and that is, uh, again, by charter. You know, I spent seven and a half years at, at Arkansas State Parks having the you-know-what scared out of me by a man named Mark Steindl who is in charge of purchasing. And Mark Steindl told me that you know, the gist of it was for inappropriations, whether intentional or unintentional, we can go to jail. And I take that very seriously. And, you know, my wife's here tonight. I'm very partial. I like to stay at home <laughs> instead of in jail. Um, and I can assure you that, I, that my ethically and professionally, I am following all guidelines as I believe them. Um, you know, the, I, I would put an asterisk on your comment that it is your opinion that there are some major issues with those taxes. I would disagree with counsel we have received on, on some of those topics. But like I said, I think we're working through that so we can, we can find what comes on that. The gist of the community center deal is, I think if everybody could step back a moment for emotionally and look at, okay, there's a greenhouse at the community center and Parks has 62 spring gardens uh, that they manage and all those resources that you can see the obvious benefits of seed starts and transplants and grafting and educational components. Uh, Native Plant Society has been reached out to as a way to demonstrate the ornamental value beyond all that. So there's a, a ton of things that go right along with our mission statement mm -hmm. and, and what our focus is as a park agency. Uh, the, the, the stat, one project or more common is staffing the greenhouse uh, to our mind is to uh, maybe stop by for a few minutes a day, make sure things are locked, make sure the watering system, heat and air, things like that are going. This wouldn't be a position at the greenhouse. This would be uh, our, our gardener going there in the same way that we go to our little greenhouse or Bear Creek Nursery or any place that he goes to get plants and, and do work of that type. So I, I think the amount we're talking about is fairly small and as I mentioned we're starting off with the $7,500 savings for that for that and then you start compounding out plant sales and things that we can provide revenue or save on expenditures I think that that weighs out pretty well. Mr. Mitchell. That's all well and good Justin but you already tried two grants with parks and what did parks tell you not on private property. Right. And let's be honest so here we have a community center foundation that went to the school district for a school that was paid for by the taxpayers of this town who paid for a new school by the taxpayers not of just this town but of the whole area the whole district of this town and, and negotiated a lease in which the community center took over responsibility for it a nonprofit correct mm -hmm. they're a nonprofit organization and they've leased it from the school district. Mm -hmm. School district didn't want to give the property to the city who would in turn was then going to arrange with the foundation to run it and do it fine in which case then the community center foundation could have very clearly taken the payments they were going to make to the school district for this piece of property and plowed it back into the property. Mm -hmm. And there's two components to that. There is the community center piece of it, and then there's the business park center, which is the schools over there that's supposed to generate the money. So the whole thing isn't a community center. It's a community center business park. And what the concern was at this point in time is you're, is you're still mixing municipal commission and city property generated funds and you're, you're, you're in negotiating with an entity that is a private entity. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's a foundation. It's, it's, and so when the CAPC had our concern about the chamber and they came to us about this project, we consulted the municipal league. And they said, no way you can enter this thing with a jackrabbit uh, mm -hmm. the scheduling system. Absolutely not, because it's, it's diverting in, it's converting a municipality into working with a, uh, with a private organization. You can't do it. You hear from the Parks Commission, you can't get grants and shift them to uh, things that are going on. It was the community center, and they said no. 
So my question came up when we did this, I did this motion, was to step back also uh, from the community center at that time until we had the opportunity to do due diligence on what exactly was going on with the community center. So I, the way I see it, uh, because of the greenhouse and all, if in fact we want to proceed with that and y'all want to do it, I think we would have to make an exception to my motion specific okay. to that to allow the greenhouse to take place. But I think my motion as it stands, if it still continues to stand, is, is an umbrella of, of how this city, uh, done by this council, mm -hmm. plans on dealing with the community center until they give us the data that we need to do strong, good due diligence in a business manner. We don't plan on doing business. And that's what we said. Can I make two points to that? Oh, yes, sir. Certainly. Um, <coughs> One, I was unaware of that. I feel we have another little communication problem. I, I, I didn't. I was unaware of that motion or that that directive. Okay. Um, so certainly, you know, I, I believe the mayor can speak. That I, I serve at the mayor's request, and 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 any time I need anything or question, I, I come to him. Secondly, as far as doing a. Uh, an agreement with the private foundation. Did we not just endorse a $1.6 million project with the foundation, private foundation? No, you said it was Tom Walton, not the foundation. You just told us earlier. Yes, at the very beginning, you said it was just Tom Walton, not their foundation. Uh, to the other comment that came through, I cannot speak to exactly the accounting of how that works through. I believe it does work through the foundation, technically. And the WA Trailblazers, would be, which we have a cooperative agreement, not a contract with, um, Again, is also a private nonprofit. But actually, you do have a contract with them because the agreement has all five elements of a contract. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. So, the the community center is is building the greenhouse. Correct. And who is supplying the starters? The, um, the the plants, the seeds, and, and whatever that that hasn't been discussed yet. We have we have donations of native plant uh, transplants and the numerous ways that we can go about that. We we have a ten thousand dollar budget we spend on plants every year, so I expect to whittle that down considerably. So we have we have a budget item for that for those plant starts that we would bought as plants at a nursery at. <coughs> so you, 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 there's no there's no cash outlay. No. All there will Not be is 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 checking the facility once once the plants are in place and started and, and everything set yeah, up. Yeah, and there's still a, a lot of dynamics to go. One of the things brought out was for community use of this, and that's a dynamic we certainly like and would like to see that you know some home owners or could use their gardens. I mean, you know, there's there's it's it's an evolving uh, process, and we're just reaching out to other community groups um, to to try and reach them. And reached out to to Chris so, uh, Fisher with the sure. native plants, and uh, that those are those are some good things we can do. And uh, again, to me, it's a I believe the comments from the meeting was well, this makes perfect sense, but we don't know exactly what to do with it yet. You know, and uh, I, I, some may see that as a ridiculous. Some of that I see that as a logical statement that we can work on. Stuff. I would like to make a motion that we um, allow this process to continue uh, under the supervision and reporting to the mayor and and so you know if I mean if it's if something seems like it's out of line or expenses come up or something that right. uh, so that's the reason I want to do it that way. Yeah. There's a motion. It, there's a motion. I, I have a, a, a. Well, let me wait until he gets if he gets a second. I'm confused. What you're one. confused Be about? Be more explicit on the motion, please. The, the motion is to allow this this uh, process to continue on the greenhouse between the foundation oh. and parks. Uh, with a reporting to the mayor as far as, uh, you know, as long as we're, and the reason I say it that way, and that's the motion, and then the, an explanation is, is that that way, uh, you know, they give an accounting to the mayor what's going on, and if it seems like it's something that's, that's inappropriate, then he can, you know, nix it or, you know, come to us for, for further approval or 
And I'll second that because you clarified it's for the greenhouse and, and you, 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 you specified it. The first, when yeah. you said it, it was too open. I'm sorry. No, I, I was intended for the greenhouse. It's, okay. We're not renting their room or anything like okay, that. Okay, Ms. Kendrick. Um, I would like to point out to Council that once again we have an agreement that we don't even know what the agreement is and we're about to endorse it. So what are we doing here? Good point. And I, I, we, they even admit they don't know yet how it's going to flesh out. So how can we endorse it at this point? Pardon me, I think what the deal is, it's over, going back to David's motion from whenever this was uh, about not doing any work up there. And that's what... Uh, well, if, if we were trying to make an exception to th that motion, that old make an exception. motion to... to Because we have suspended all activity with the, from the city to the Community Center Foundation. But I see what Terry's trying to do. We're trying to give... That, but then at the same time, I, t I listen to what Ms. Kendrick's saying. In a way, we probably really ought to wait until they come up with the agreement. Well, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's un and it's under the mayor's supervision too, so he's going to be in involved in the in that process. So is the agreement going to come back to us before it's implemented? Well, I don't. I don't. Oh, if he if he deems that that's what should be, I would say so. But otherwise, I mean, I mean, there's got to be an element of trust here somewhere. <laughs> Huh? Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Ms. Snyder, wasn't the motion to let them go ahead and start putting this thing together and let you keep you in line on what's going on? No. No. <laughs> the, mo the motion was to allow the process to continue with the well, greenhouse that's while reporting to the mayor. Okay, that's how I meant it. Mr. Mayor, yes. I would like to to wait two weeks until the attorney comes back with some responses to all the questions and issues that Ms. Kendrick raised before we start creating exceptions. At two weeks is not that big a deal, and you're going to be back in two weeks, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. if, if, um, if that's a motion to defer, I second. Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah, what, 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 was that a motion to defer? Is that okay? Mr. Weaver? Well, I will not be here in two weeks. I'm scheduled to be out of month. town. <laughs> we need to ask Justin in two weeks is okay. I will, I, I will be gone as well okay. that, at that date. So that would I, would I would prefer to request that park business would be deferred until I can attend. Okay. One month. I will that second be one month. May, may I ask a, an address to the council? One, one question. With that new knowledge of this ordinance, I don't feel like I can even negotiate actually at this point to, towards an MOU. So right. I, I, I do think there's some, you know, it, it, you're some, I think some validity you're right. to that. I don't, I don't, I don't think without some sort of change that, you know, now with that knowledge I now have, I, I don't believe I can bring you anything back because I don't believe I have any authority to negotiate. That's true. So, true. Uh, so you need the city attorney so I, to look into it, or what? Just what? Yeah. I, you know, we, our intention at this point, like I said, this just transpired last week of the location that we were comfortable with, that we were going back to look at how to write an MOU. And I would certainly, with, especially with concerns from council, would, would like guidance from mayor, attorney. It, it may be that the motion may be better that, uh, you know, allow Justin to proceed to, with the MOU to bring back to council. This at least allows him the opportunity to proceed. That, that would allow us to bring something back to you, because as I said, I don't really—I feel like if, with this new knowledge, if we defer everything, it does prevent him from doing anything. Um, so, yes. A question for Mr. Mitchell: What would be your definition of engagement? He can't talk to them. He can't have go out for coffee with them. I, what, it, what's engagement? The engagement wasn't. It was suspend. To it was suspend, suspend engagement. all engagement with Eureka Springs. So the, the the engagement was all activities in in general. It was contracting. It was it was movement. It but was he employees. It was in, it, 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 he can't discuss engagement. I guess could be uh, include. Uh, it probably could have. I suppose some people could say it, it's it's everything. 
my my interpretation didn't have my interpretation was I wasn't I was not to do mm -hmm. any more discussion regarding the contract. That was the intent at the mm -hmm. time. Right. <coughs> it had nothing to do with anything else but the contract. And even under that interpretation it still would would right. deal with, with Justin and contracts. Well, I mean yeah. I read it. So. I gave a copy of it to the city clerk. She put it in here, and we all voted on it, folks. Yeah. So if we didn't understand it, we shouldn't have voted. Now I'm just We're saying, here. you know. But <laughs> the question is right now is is where to proceed with this the greenhouse issue. We've got right now a motion to defer for a month, so Justin can't do anything for a month. I'm not sure that's what the council wants. And maybe it is. Maybe y'all don't. You know. The, the greenhouse is sitting up there and nothing happens in a month. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I have another question and it, it has nothing to do with this. It was a question I was going to ask at the beginning. On the November 21st meeting. No, we actually got the motion to defer it for a month. So no. you're going to have to def keep your comments no. to the motion to oh, defer this it. Is, this isn't about the greenhouse. This is about some. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> okay. All right. So. I mean, we got the motion on on the table to defer it for a month, and that takes precedent over everything else. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, uh, if there's no further discussion on the motion to defer it for a month, did did we get a yes from him that it, that would work? Uh, it, it seems to me just just it would be. You know, ideally, we'd be able to have discussions and this is come back in a month with something instead of coming back with a month to come back in two weeks to come back and you know I, I think we're it doesn't give. A, Authority to discuss. I mean, to, I feel like with I think engagement is pretty all-encompassing to my mind, and I, my general mode of operations is I'm going to defer to the most extreme interpretation to prevent any, you know, I agree. Bob. any challenges. Uh, is it I possible? guess can I amend my own motion? Or? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, I mean, think so. Then I think I would like to amend it to say that in a month. Justin will come back with a specific plan regarding the greenhouse, but he will not enter into any agreement Can't. about the greenhouse without approval by Can't. city council. So you can do what you have to. That's fine. As, as long as that makes the body comfortable. I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. I just like I said, I, to me, with that knowledge, I mean, that's that is. In all negotiations and work up your memorandum of understanding and everything, but that's it's that's no good until we, don't we get the interim. agreement. Yeah, absolutely. We and with the understanding, it's not approved until it comes before the council. Certainly. Is that you? Um, I just Bob, have to. Bob, I'm, pardon me. Is that your? That's my motion, but uh, is that you, I'm that's not your sure amendment. my second is going to agree with it. Who's the second? Um, my problem is that I still believe that we've got a conflict out there between the parks director um, and his uh, position with the foundation and the position with parks and that just muddies everything and um, I, I just think this contract too is muddied by that and I, I don't feel comfortable with it um, and I I don't think it should proceed under these conditions. Um, uh, we didn't have a second on your amendment. And I'm not. You don't, she did not have to sec approve I, the second. I'm either. not. I'm not. With, I, I'm not withdrawing my second from the motion right. to defer. Bob. Bob made an amendment. So I, I need will, a second. I will second that and amendment. And, to and Mickey, uh, Mickey, to had, Mickey seconded the amendment to the motion to defer. Yes. Yes. Okay. The motion to defer is okay. he still is allowed to negotiate okay. and work okay. up a memorandum of an agreement, okay. but he cannot sign anything until he and comes back I before the council that. in one month. And I think I was addressing Is that, that what the city clerk has to have? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Does everybody understand the amendment? No. But okay. No? I do. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those in favor of the amendment, sing what? Yes, ma'am. You want to oh, You want to roll call? All right. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. McClung? Yeah. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. 5-1. Okay. <coughs> now we'll go to the motion. You want to roll call on it? Which was uh, to defer to for one month. To, excuse me. To defer for one month. No, what was the motion? I didn't. Remember. Wasn't it? 
that, that is for difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you defer it for one month. What's okay. That's what they just Allowing discussion. Now, okay. they, vote, they voted on the amendment, which was to allow him to continue on with discussion and a memorandum of understanding. The main motion was to defer it for one month. Okay, got it. So deferring for one month wasn't included in your amended motion, Bob? That's the original motion. That's the original motion. So it Thank is you. now. Thank I you. <laughs> you would call roll call for the, for the motion to defer for one month. Ms. Kendrick? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Five <coughs> one. All right, thank you. Okay, I think that concludes that business, order of business. Yes. Uh, agenda setting. Oh, Council? For me. Hearing none, we will go to City Council comments and start with Mr. Mitchell. Left to right, right to left. You know you usually hate doing that. But we've had a, a, a very lengthy, emotionally laden meeting with a lot of emotional laden topics. But when it all boils down to this, it boils down to the fact that I believe myself and everybody at this table supports the Parks Commission, supports the work they do, supports the trails, the concept of trails, and what they will do for this city. And more importantly, even with all of that, and I want to be very clear, I believe very strongly that myself, I support very clearly the benefactor that stepped up to the plate and donated a tremendous amount of money, energy, and support to this city. That person deserves to be acknowledged and, and alkalates for, for stepping up. Because again, no money, no mission. If you didn't have that money, we wouldn't be having this discussion. I uh, applaud Justin for stepping up here. I, I, want, I would like to hear, of him, hear from him on a minimum now based on the statutes on a quarterly basis. I, I really think that the Parks Commission should step back and look seriously at what things that have gone on, the communication issues, the transparency, the timelines of things, the impact on, on the community as a whole, uh, the, the, how things are communicated to the council, because you know there there's some there was some very unusual communication, and I think the commission should take the opportunity, like a lot of commissions do, and start rotating your chair, and and I really can strongly urge you to consider that strongly, and that's my comments. Ms. Green. Well, first of all. Justin, you have been amazing for Parks. I, I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank your commission. Um, in no way it was implied like we were going to get rid of them or we were thinking about it. I never thought about getting rid of that commission. Um, the transparency is what I've had a problem with. And I think we're going to really need to work on that because there's people here that really feel disenfranchised and stuff because there wasn't a transparency and, and maybe if there would have been maybe it wouldn't have changed but maybe it would have um, I agree with Mr. Mitchell I, I was uh, on commissions for 14 years after a while you need fresh people you need new ideas and, and I feel that now I see it and I was kind of relieved to step down from them and, and I agree with Mr. Mitchell you need to get a new chair every two years every three years you just need fresh ideas new takes and, and I hope you'll take that to heart um, I'm happy with everything with y'all I, I think you've worked really hard like I said just come back with us with a little more transparency Mickey. oh <laughs> this has been such a long emotionally charged meeting since we've had one like this 
So I'm going to lighten it up. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. <laughs> it's my husband's and my 35th wedding anniversary. Oh. The whole world celebrates our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I picked that day. <laughs> Bob? Well, I have to say how wonderful Justin is or I'll be run out of town. <laughs> 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 I do appreciate you, Justin, and uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Ms. Kendrick? I, do, I also want to thank Justin. I, you may not think that I do, <laughs> but I do greatly appreciate the work you've done. I, I'm sure that you were a great factor in bringing this downhill trail project to the city, which I think it will be a wonderful benefit. I only wish I knew more about it which I don't, um, but um, I, I'm sure there's a, I'm, I'm certainly hoping there's a lot good there, but I, I don't want you to go, and I'm, I'm sorry if you may feel that I've been beating up on you. <laughs> I'm, it's not you personally. <laughs> so, thank you. I, uh, I think we got some things accomplished tonight uh, without anybody screaming and yelling and, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know uh, it's it's hard to do these things and and you know and, and stay focused on what what we're trying to do and, and that's and that's everyone here is trying to do what's what they feel in their hearts best for the city and for the community and the people that live here and you know and we don't always agree but uh, we don't try and cut each other's throats either. So I'm grateful for that. Glad to be here. Thank you, Terry. Uh, okay, as far as uh, announcements going, from the, we have, uh, this is kind of exciting. Wednesday, for anybody who's never seen the worst movie in the world, filmed in Eureka Springs, oh. Pass the Ammo is it's going to be filmed. <laughs> if you live in Eureka, it is. <laughs> or if you were right there with it. <laughs> and if you were across the street uh, imbibing while you were watching it's, it's even better but uh, it's going to be shown at 8 p.m. here in the odd so it should be a fun time it really will be it's, it's going to be great um, pass the ammo uh, anyway on the 17th uh, is one of our favorite day parades the St. Patty's Day Parade starting at 2 p.m. at uh, starting around the library, coming down Spring Street, and you know, and the good part about this too is at 11 o'clock and at 1 o'clock, um, the Southeast Oklahoma State University is going to give 30 minutes excerpt of Hamlet, so get some culture, um, and they probably won't be singing in in uh, Italian, so hopefully we can Where? understand it. Where? Be in the Basin Park, uh, and that's at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And our high school Rotary Interact will also be in the Basin Park uh, at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So this should be a great day, um, great fun time. On the 24th, we'll have our classic Victorian classic starting for all those who like to get up early and start running at 7 o'clock in the morning, beginning and ending at the community center. And then the next day uh, on the 25th, we'll have March for Our Lives. Uh, starting at noon at the Basin Park. And then on the 24th uh, will be the Kite Festival from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. out at Turpentine Creek. And that's all I have for the next two weeks. So motion to dessert. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> dessert. <laughs> motion to eat those. Uh, yeah. Second. All in favor? <laughs> dessert.